This episode of Where Did the Road Go is brought to you in part by our Patreons. If you want to become a patron, go to wheredidtheroadgo.com. And now our show. Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at where did the road go? Dot com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this edition of Where Did the Road Go? This is uh, uh, going to be a fringe news show, and I have with me Rojan. Hello. Melissa Martell. Hello. And the infamous red pill junkie. Oh, I'm the infamous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, got it. it I, I thought you would like being infamous. Oh, yeah. All right. All There's right. nothing wrong with that. Depends what you're infamous <laughs> for. That's true. true. So uh, I've collected a handful of uh, interesting news stories for us to discuss. And uh, the first one is actually one Cheryl Lee just recently uh, shared with us, us. And I thought this was especially interesting. Finnish research project probes stigma of the paranormal. And this comes from some place I can't pronounce, apparently. Is it like Kaczynski or? It, well, the the actual no, web, web ad one. yeah what a, web address is y l e dot f i, and then after that yeah, it says Utiset. Utiset? yeah something like Utiset. that. There we go. Um, but basically there is this research done in Finland, and it was called uh, Mind and the Other, and it was funded by the country's most pre- uh, prestigious academic body, the Academy of Finland. And they did a four-year study, which ended in 2017. They investigated what the researchers called uncanny experiences, ones that defy common sense in the mainstream modern worldview. It's a fairly long article. It's really interesting. And one of the things that I thought was particularly interesting is like uh, under the section called Lived Truth, it says there is, in fact, some evidence for more common parapsychological phenomena, such as precognition, contrary to most media reports and popular scientific figures. In an address to the American Statistical Association's 2016 Joint Statistical Meetings, Jessica Utz, professor of statistics at the University of California, talked about research in this area she had been closely tracking over the past 30 years. In her assessment, these phenomena are real, as real as any phenomena that have been studied for a long time by many different laboratories. Utz was commissioned to write a report for the U.S. Congress on decades of research into these phenomena where she reviewed multiple studies. Uh, The data in support of precognition and possibly other related phenomena are quite strong statistically and would be widely accepted if they pertain to something more mundane. I have asked the debunkers if there is any amount of data that could convince them, and they generally have responded by saying probably not. Probably not, yeah. I asked them what original research they have read, and they mostly admit they haven't read any. Now, there's the definition of pseudoscience, well, basing, you know conclusions, so basing conclusions on belief rather uh, than data. But there is so many, like, st- there's actually peer-reviewed release studies in magazines like by Dean Radin and other scientists. And he, he said himself, he's like, look, they're either not reading them or they just don't care because they're there. And, mm-hmm. and quite a few of them. So this just totally reinforces that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it, it also says, I mean, this is based out of Finland, this, this particular article. It says, if such experiences are so common, why don't we hear about them more in modern-day Finland? And they yeah. talk about how taboo it is, and impartially because of the United States. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it, they call it low cultural self-esteem. Um, and they said that... Uh, Possible reasons for this Finnish sensitivity to experiences that only a century ago were part of common folk tradition. Uh, She sees strict boundaries set by medicine and medical institutions as one factor, but also attributes it in part to the history of Finnish modernity. In the European and Nordic context, Finland entered the modern era quite late, creating a welfare state and modern society only during the post-war period. Uh, so basically, they're they're looking. They don't want to be thought down of by Americans yeah. and stuff. And it's such a, an American taboo to believe in this stuff that they also don't want to believe in it. Yeah. Even though, I mean, I bet you any one of us could say, you know, some f- phenomena that happened to us within six months, at least, if not less. 
Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Except yeah, maybe except uh, maybe Rogan. <laughs> Actually, no. I've I've had a pretty sedate, calm year of of, of strangeness, so and I and I'm thankful for that. Uh, <laughs> um, that's not real surprising. That that's like, it's kind of like when you hear people talk about like, well, we'll take Mexico for example, since Red Pill's here. You have um, you or you have other countries that release their UFO files. Mexico for a while had no problem releasing their UFO information. And when they do release something, everybody goes, yeah, but it's Mexico or it's yeah. China or, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, it's Britain. Or it's though. Canada. So, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> Canada. That's a great example, actually, because Canada mm-hmm. was recently very forthcoming with a lot of their information. Exactly. And the American reaction was, yeah, but it's Canada. Like, <laughs> what's so wrong with Canada? You know, I don't, what, what are you saying here? But, well, if it, you know, because we're America. And if America doesn't find UFOs, UFOs aren't real. And, um we tend to have this arrogant attitude here that if we didn't discover it or if we don't believe in it, then it's bunk, yeah. you know, which is sad, you know, or yeah, it's looked just, as folklore. Uh, yeah. Just a little caveat. I mean, regarding the Mexican UFO files, as far as I know, it was just one case that happened uh, like 10 years ago when president uh, Vicente Fox was in office. And it was the case when, when, uh, uh uh, a plane of the Mexican Air Force spotted some mysterious lights and they showed uh, an unexpected amount of cooperation because it was a change of administration because of the the, 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 the state of politics in Mexico. But as far as I know, that's it. And the Air Force is never going to release any more information because they, they, they became incensed by how Jaime Maussan uh, use the information basically, you know, mm-hmm. just for profit. <laughs> now, uh, getting back to the other thing, uh, it's interesting, uh, Rogan, I just read um, an interview. Uh, someone interviewed Senator Harry Reid, you know, the one that, that was involved with these mm-hmm. famous now uh, Pentagon uh, project, you know, the mm-hmm. one in which Robert Bigelow was uh, involved. And apparently, wh- while they were conducting it, there were people, I guess, in inner circles of the, of, of, of the administration or, or inner circles of the military that were incredibly interested in the subject, that took the UFO subject in very, very seriously. And they were very fr- also very frustrated, like saying, why aren't we uh, doing something with it. Why are we not like researching this more closely? Why are we not investing more probably time and resources doing it? Re- let's remember that, I mean, as far as we know, they just uh, invested $22 million in this Pentagon program, which is like peanuts in, you know, in, in, in what is, you know, black ops. And they, these people were saying, I bet the Russians are doing something. I, I, I bet the Chinese are doing something. And maybe it's true, you know, maybe, you know, uh, quote unquote, America's enemies, although, you know, maybe Russia is not considered an enemy anymore. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> is, uh, oh maybe they have a, 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 a state uh, sanctioned uh, department or project that is taking uh, a, a serious look into the UFO phenomenon, although obviously covertly, maybe not just for this for for the giggle factor, but also for not showing to the other guys in, in the chessboard mm-hmm. uh, game what they know. Well, you got to wonder if this is like it was back in the fifties and sixties, where it was vehemently denied or proven to be false. No, no, we're not investigating this stuff. And nobody wanted to say they were investigating because they didn't want to give, you know, like you just said, the other people, the information while America's investigating it. Maybe we need to be investigating it. And no one wants to bring their card to the table and say they're investigating it. I mean, and that happens with a whole bunch of things. Like the Russians were investigating Psy and ESP. And then next, you know, the CIA is like right in there because they're like, well, if that, you know, there's that whole space race and everything like that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that, that. 
whether or not it means something. Obviously, it does mean something because it's you know research is showing that there's something to it. So obviously, there there is something to all that. Well, as we're now discussing, though, that is debatable if there is actually something to it, though. You know, because there was just an article this week that I was reading somewhere that said that people don't want it, that people want to investigate this stuff, but they don't because nobody wants to be looked at as the UFO yeah. guy. They don't want to be well, looked at as the quacks. They they don't, but uh, there's obviously people who have gone in there, you know, and they're just keeping it top secret. <laughs> they, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I, if it has something to do with national security, I think, and they think they can get a one up, I, 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 I don't doubt that they would, but they'll call it some other name. So mm-hmm. you would never guess, right? Or just bury it completely. Exactly. Yeah. Some. Well, and I mean, <clears throat> even even with the whole revelation back in December of, hey, the, the government's studying UFOs. Well, no kidding, they're studying UFOs. I don't think they've ever stopped studying UFOs. Um, yeah. You know, Project Blue Book was not the real project. And if you read uh, 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 Valet's first memoir, uh, Forbidden Science, Volume 1, he talks about that where he's quite sure they have a lot more information that they're not giving out to the people in Project Look, Blue Book. Um, so, I mean, this is, they're always studying this stuff just because Mm -hmm, they don't admit they're studying. It doesn't mean it's not Mm. there. Of course, they're not going to admit to it. It's interesting though, that they say in the mainstream that it's really shunned. So even with people like you or I walking on the streets, I I can't even talk about a dream I had that came true or or I saw something like in this article. It's not even just with UFOs or made up in the government. It's like everyday people are ashamed, you know sort of taboo about it so that they, they yeah but crazy is that such the case though because i mean i could see if it were back in the 80s but with the advent of paranormal tv reality shows you see more and more people coming out of the closet with this stuff yeah you know Maybe, but i mean when i'm sitting when i'm sitting in work and somebody somebody tried to bring it up everybody looked at her like she was nuts and shut her right down and didn't want to talk to her so i don't know I think there might there might still be a huge part of the population who thinks it's a little bit a little bit much. Yeah, I, there's there, there's a huge popularity of of, of those kind of uh, TV shows, but there's also a huge popularity of you know pornography, and nobody wants to admit they watch porn. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we just snickers at that, but um. I don't, again, though, like, look, like, for example, we, the pod, like, I, I do a paranormal oriented podcast at times. Soraya does one, and there's hundreds and hundreds of them out there, and more and more popping up all the time, you know, whereas before this stuff wasn't really out there. In my experience, I'll bring the stuff up around people, and very often I'll get the, uh, oh, you're into that kind of stuff, blah, 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 because that's the first thing that they go to. And I'm like, well, yes right. and no, you know, but then, yeah. Inadvertently, and it's probably happened to everybody here. Someone will then walk up privately later and say, "Hey, um, <laughs> this happened yes. to me, or this yes. happened to me." And it's like, "Why did you? Why? Why are you saying this now? We were just talking about this five minutes ago." Well, yeah. people think I'm weird, but I've well, seen this, or I've had this yeah. happen. And we have that too with like groups that I've run. People, when I made it a public group, they said, "Well, we're not going to share our stuff. We want it, you know, private because we're scared that people are going to see if we write anything or that we're sharing something to a paranormal group." So, uh, a couple of them that I ran, we had to have it totally private because mm-hmm. people were upset about people seeing that they believed in it. So, and I was like, "Oh, I, I'm not embarrassed at all." Right. Yeah. So two exactly. different things, right? <laughs> I've actually had very little issues with people uh, not believing this stuff, even just in everyday life when I'm doing computer repair or something. Someone will ask me about this show, and I'll tell them, and they'll be like, wow, that's really interesting, and then they'll tell me something that happened to them. But I don't don't get a ton of skepticism from people. It's ironic that we say this because one of the reasons that I use a fake name like I do on Facebook is because – there's a vast majority of my family, even my own wife, doesn't know many of the things that I've experienced because I don't want to tell, you know, my, my, ironically, my kids mm-hmm. actually do know now. But there's a lot of people in my private life and my real life that I don't tell about things that happen to me because there is, there is in the back of my head is I don't want people to laugh at me because I've seen, yeah. you know, I don't want to be the guy, oh, you're the guy seeing little green aliens or, you know. 
Um, cause I, when I, I had one experience and I immediately, as soon as it happened, posted on Facebook, this just happened to me, blah, 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 blah. And within five hours I was working midnights within a period of time. I had my Facebook page full of even people that know that I'm into this stuff or whatever. were like, Oh, the little green aliens are coming row, blah, blah, blah. So I pulled the post back down, but at the same time it's, it goes both ways. I've also got people that are like, Oh yeah, you know, blah, 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 you know? So I, I kind of have to step on my own foot because there's stuff that I don't discuss with my family that I've seen and been through because I don't want the reaction from the family. But could it also be, uh, Rogen, that in a way, maybe unconsciously, you want uh, your family to be like a safe refuge? I think that's partially what it is. Once you are getting tired of it well, because, you know, mm -hmm. you, you cannot I stay also immersed. Have, um, It, it's yes and no. I also have members of my family that are very, um, very right wing, very Christian oriented mm. that if they knew some of the stuff that I talked about and stuff that I researched, they would, they would immediately, it would, it would go sideways very quickly. It would become rather right. pear shaped. And I don't want, you know, I don't want it. It's just like, you know what? I, I don't want to deal with that, but it's getting harder and harder to hide because when you walk into my office, there's, it's like now my, my bookshelves are <laughs> overflowing with books on witchcraft and UFOs and kind of stuff like that. <laughs> That's hard to hide. So, yeah. Eventually well, just, one of them's going to look up and be like, why do you have a book on Madame Blavowski and Christian magic yeah. sitting here? Oh, well, you know, well, you know I just <laughs> never, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had never heard of the term low cultural self-esteem before. So I think that's maybe that's what it is. That's an interesting yeah. concept. I kind of pick and choose who and what I talk around who and where now you, you get a feeling for what you can say around who. And it's mostly because I just don't want to deal with the baggage of, you know, of what's, what could come out of it, you know, well, it's like whatever. I have, I have a landlord upstairs and she, I just found out that she goes to church and, and everything. And she's like, oh, we're coming down to repair this or this in your apartment. And I'm looking around I'm like, hmm, should I put the Aleister Crowley book and the Ouija board away? I probably you know what? should. I probably should. They may not want me living downstairs in their suite if they know Soraya. that. This might be a good time for me to talk about what's going on with me tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. We're going in that direction. And, of course, it'll be in the past by the time people hear this. But. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, tomorrow since, is the 24th of March in the, as of this recording. So since we're bringing, since we're going into the realm of. Hello? Ro oh. just disappeared. Ro just disappeared. Nobody I'm like, hello? Me. That was like, they Silence him. Yeah. <laughs> ah, is that what happened? Bro, we can't hear you. <laughs> hello? He, he, hey, you are. Hello? Hello? Hello, you're back. You disappeared. You were wow, about to what happened? your announcement. That was weird. Okay. <laughs> that was bizarre. I don't know why it did that. <laughs> I have a fantastic <laughs> internet connection, too. Anyways, um, I only bring this up now because this is the direction the conversation is going. Tomorrow, I am going to be going to... Well, let me preface this. There's a couple... The, the two things that annoy me most are ufology and organized religion. So tomorrow... I am going to go to this UFO conference called the Scientific UFO Research Conference. It is being hosted at the uh, Gateway Anab Anabaptist Church facility in Monroe, Michigan. Um, so right there, I'm like, UFO conference being held at a church. That sounds odd. Well, maybe the church just needs some money and somebody is renting out the hall. So I'm rolling with it. It turns out that the whole thing is going to be about showing this movie called Alien Intrusion. Um, this is a movie that, after I did a little bit of research and talked to a few people, was created by the Creation Ministries International and Gary Bates. And what the conference is being presented as is a UFO scientific conference. Come down here. There's going to be vendors set up. We're going to be talking about UFOs, blah, 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 blah. It's a bait and switch kind of thing, like you see on Sunday at Sunday school, or you know, over the summer, a, sun, a week long Sunday school things. Where yeah, bring your kids. There's going to be food and snacks and blah blah. And then you get there and you figure figure out, oh, this is about in religious indoctrination, more or less. What this movie Alien Intrusion turns out to be about is it is a movie that was made by a religious organization that postulates for the most part that aliens, extraterrestrials and abductions are actually demons that are here to infest your soul or do whatever it is that demons do. And it uh, turns I, out, I, I, I wish Tim Renner was on the conversation right now, but go on. It is, um, 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh no, do I really want to go to this? It turns out that's what this is. Um, it very much has a lot to do with the Nick Redfern book, Final Events, which goes into the Cullen's Elite that Nick Redford talks about in that book. I think what these people did is there's I've ran into people like this before that were like, no, this all this the unified extra the unified paranormal fear theory. Which, um, which, you know, we, you guys have all, we've all talked about this many times where this, the paranormal phenomena could be this other thing that's interacting with our consciousness. Well, religious organizations have taken this a step further and said, ah, this is all of the devil, all of this paranormal stuff, fairies, UFOs, aliens. That's kind of what they're throwing at us. Well, this, this was, this was our, uh, our whole show. Everything is demons. That, yes. that, that was exactly what we were talking about. Exactly. So these people have ran with that and have made this UFO documentary and gone out and find every kind of supporting evidence that supports that theory and put it in there. And Nick Redfern is in this as well. Rather, I, I can't say if he was duped to be put into this or Nick just said, you know what? I have a book. I need a couple of bucks. I've talked about this. Sure, I'll be in this. And they put him into it or if they duped him into it or whatever. But it goes into the whole Collins Elite thing, which was this U.S. government organization that um, funded UFO research um, to basically support or find out their idea if, if UFOs and aliens were actually demons. So I also come to find out that the guy that narrates this movie is the guy who used to play Bo Duke on the Dukes of Hazard. Ah. So, hmm. yeah, <laughs> it just gets weirder. So... I'm going to go to this and be like, all right. And then and, and they're kind of presenting it like, yeah, this is what this is going to be. It's going to be a UFO conference. And what it is, it's kind of a thing where it's like, all right, we're going to get all these people in here. And then we're going to try to throw this at them and try to get some converts out of them and try to get them over to the Lord side. Yeah. So I confirmed on Facebook that, yes, I am going to be going to this event. And as soon as I did, I immediately started getting friend requests or friend invites from people locally that are in this church or are part of this church group. And I'm like, oh. where do I know you from? You know, I'm like, I'm not trying to be weird, but I send a message. Why do you want to be friends with me? Do you listen to the show? Do I know you from somewhere? And then I do a little bit more research. And I'm like, oh, these people are part of that church. I'm like, well, we just saw that you have similar interests and, and you're going to this event this weekend and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm probably not somebody you want to be friends with. But thank you for the <laughs> invite. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear your review on it. Robert. Yes. Yeah. So tomorrow night I, after the show is over, we're actually going to mean a couple of, I'm going down with a guy who, uh, who's a skeptic that wrote a book um, called uh, Chasing, uh, Chasing Disclosure, uh, Eric Wojciechowski. And he's a big member of the skeptical community. And I really don't like skeptics. Um, I find them to be very smarmy, very arrogant, which is exactly oh. the way I am sounding right now. By, ha ha, this is all silly. I'm laughing at your UFO religion stuff. I am becoming a smarmy person. But I'm going to go to this with this person. I think the only reason I'm really going down there, again, is to kind of snicker and laugh at this and see where it goes. Um, putting myself, you know, I'm, I'm taking myself outside of my comfort zone, hoping that maybe it'll be a good experience for me of some kind. But um, I wish I, I could go it, with you. Yeah, that's it's kind of what it is. Everybody that it's, wants to go with it is like, okay, this is... You know, to somebody who doesn't know any better, they're like, oh, I'm just going to go to this UFO conference, not realizing that it's actually being put on by a church organization trying to trying to some way or another pull you into Christianity or to pull you to their worldview of what UFO and, and extraterrestrial or paranormal phenomena actually is, except for their view of the unified paranormal field phenomena is everything is demons, as we were talking yes. about before. That's so dubious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's what it is. And I, I know I, I'm kind of going to get down there and look at people and watch the reaction and go, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you're here. You get suckered in. We're all suckered in. You know, <laughs> did you bring your Xenu passes? You know, <laughs> So. You need to make up some really nice signs, Rojan. No, I'm just going to go around and hang out, you know, hand out some flyers. I'm wearing the... Um, we the love project. demons. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I might... I don't know. I don't, I, I'm don't. i not even sure if I'm going to go down there just to be that smarmy and laugh. I just want to see what the reactions are and hear what these people have to say. Right. And then when we record the show tomorrow night, I, I don't know how much of a dick I'm going to be about it, but... I, I don't know. I just want to see how, how, they're, how they're going... To, I want to see what their shtick is and how... What is your selling point? How are you going to sell me on this? You right. know, I'm going to come in there. I am, I am a UFO person, you know, I, which I'm really not, but I'm going to come in there and, you know, and I want to see, well, sell me on what you're doing. Tell me, tell me what your, sell me what your thing is. Why should I believe you? Exactly. <laughs> and I want to hear what they have to say. 
and I want to hear how they present it. And I also want to see how other people react and how they gauge their reaction to those other people. Mm -hmm. Because I just know a lot of people are going to go to this not realizing what it is. And I'm sure there's going to be a few there that are fully on board with it and are just going in support of it for it to make it look like, look at all these people that are here. And it's like, well, yeah, this is kind of like a Scientology thing where half the people are here are Scientologists, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a science experiment for me to see where this is going and what it is. But I just thought, I'm like, okay, the more I probe into it, I'm like, probe, yeah, there's a joke in there. Um, but the more I look into <laughs> it, I'm like, this is a religious organization that's is, it's that's putting this on and put a lot of work into this. Like, there's a scene in the movie where this woman talks about if you get abducted by aliens, the best way to get out of it is just say in the name of Jesus over and over again, and the aliens will leave you. Exactly. There's the moan. I knew it was coming from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> And that's well, what this movie is. <laughs> it's good that you're going. I mean, there's probably going to be some really, uh, you know, I don't want to use the word naive, but really easy to manipulate people going. So I'm glad you're going because well, you seem really grounded in yourself. <laughs> I've, I've brought this up before, like when I, I've talked about my experience numerous times, but fortunately I had a buffer of all these years of back research and listening to podcasts and listening to different opinions that, you know, I, I, when something did happen, I'm like, all right, you know, stay cool, you know, don't, don't flip out and lose your mind over this. But I can very easily see where if somebody does, and this ties into what we're talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to bring this around okay. that when somebody does have an experience, they see a UFO or they have some kind of an abduction experience, any kind of really heavy, strange phenomena experience, somebody who's from not part of this world has an experience. We'll say they see a UFO or a UFO buzzes their car or something happens. If you don't have anybody to talk to when you start going to people and saying, hey, I saw a UFO last night. This thing flew over my car, my car stalled, whatever the story is. And if they're not in a culture around those kind of people and they get laughed at and people, even with me posting it on Facebook, I was immediately laughed at. But I'm like, all right, I can deal with this. But you get into a situation where I've had a strange experience. I really need to talk to somebody about it. I know something happened. I don't know what it was. And you got people laughing at you. And then somebody goes to, say, a UFO conference looking for answers. Yeah. And then they go there and they find the gray aliens are our space brothers from outer space. We believe you. And here's the answers what you're looking for right here. Yeah. And I can see how people fall into those kinds of rabbit holes. And there's really, you know, unless – because it's very easy to just fall into, you know what, you're right. And tinfoil hats are real. And all – it's, yeah. you know – and, and, I mean, and you the reptilians get, are here. You know? Yeah, I mean, you get somebody telling someone like that that it's demons. They could totally change their whole mental exactly. outlook and alter their path. Because they're looking yeah. for answers, and they're and also they're looking for acceptance, and they're looking for somebody to believe them. Yeah. You know, and and you tend to want to gravitate to the first thing that that the people that will accept you. And if you go to this UFO conference being run by a church, and you say, "Hey, I had a UFO experience. It's okay. Calm down. What you saw was actually this." Oh, okay. That you're not laughing at me. You don't think I'm strange. No, no, no. You know, and boom, you've got acceptance. So now someone's foot, it, it's a way for someone to get in. Okay. We got you. You're in now start paying your tithe, you know, they yeah. along. And the, or you go into the, um, you know, the, um, the, who was the hypnosis guy that, um, had all the problems with Emma Woods. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Oh, 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 yeah. David, Jacobs. David Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah. You can fall down the dig of Jacob, dig of Jacobs pass really easily. So, you know, that's another thing I'm going, is, is this going to happen? I'm here. Am I going to see these kind of people? But I bring it back to what we we're talking about where you can't really talk about this stuff. Yeah, you can. And yeah, you can't. But it's a very touchy thing. If you've legitimately had an experience and you're looking for a place to talk to people and you're looking for a place to call home where no one's going to laugh at you, mm -hmm. you, you got to kind of be careful. You know, it's buyer beware kind of thing. And if you don't know anything and if you want, OK, I'll go look up a podcast. But there's a gazillion podcasts out there. You know, they're all like, where do I go? <laughs> you know, what do I do? Who do I talk to? Where do I go with this? Um, so, yeah, that's that's the whole thing I was leading up to and going into. I want to see what's going to happen. I want to see what this is about. More than likely, I'm going to walk away from it just laughing maniacally and going, oh, my God, what, what is what did I just see? Are these people for real? And the answer is going to be, yes, these people are for real. <laughs> you know? see, they're see, out there. <laughs> if, if it was me, I would honestly want to go and just talk to them. 
Yeah. yeah, a part of me wants to do that, but I know how I am because I really don't like arrogant. I don't like that arrogance, but I know it's it's in me to want to do that. More than likely, I'm just going to sit back and keep my mouth shut because I don't want to be rude. And part of me is going to want to be rude but because I want to laugh at all this stuff. But at the same time, that's going against my attitude of, you know, mm. don't be don't be an ego. Don't have an ego. Don't be that smarmy kind of person. But it's going to be there where I want to. Right. So yeah. right. I would want to listen, but I would definitely have my defenses up. I, yeah, I'm, yeah I, I'm curious to. Okay, I'm here. Let me hear what you have to say because I, I I need you know I need to know what to armor myself against, or I need to know what's actually going on out there. It's like I'm not a flat earther, but sometimes I like to hear what they have to say, and then yeah. I laugh. But right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, from there. Let's uh let, let let's move over to the since we were talking about Harry Reid a little bit, let's go to the new video that was released from uh the To the Stars Academy, which is uh entitled the Go Fast video. And it was now to me not surprisingly very underwhelming. It's base <laughs> it spends more time showing you what the meters and stuff on the screen mean. It's a it's a gun cam footage. Uh, of them tracking a very fast object close to the water. And that's all it is. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I think there's, they're, they're counting on people assuming that unknown objects are whatever they want them to be. But in reality, we have a video of fighters tracking an unknown object. Whether it's truly unknown to them, I'm not even sure. For all we know, they could have been told to, to you know, hey, we're sending something out, track it. You know, so they may have known it was coming from our, from us. Um, there's nothing there that, that says it's absolutely anomalous. It could be. Uh, but it also could just be tech, you know, black projects very easily. And it's also so damn short that it's, it's almost ridiculous. I haven't seen it yet. It's about 15 it seconds a- long. Oh, well, I could miss it. <laughs> 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 now, Red Pill, you saw it. Yeah, I saw it like I don't know two weeks ago. Yeah, and what did, what impression did you have of it? Mm. Like at first, uh, the first thing that came to mind was the Puerto Rican video of a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a video that was uh, at first highly praised by the UFO enthusiasts. You know, they say, hey, this is really, really good evidence of something anomalous that was also tracked by military personnel using uh, infrared camera and whatnot. And I think that slowly, uh, you know, online, an online community of skeptics analyzed the, 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 the video. They, they uh, managed to... Uh, they construct it in a very good manner, and 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 they came to the conclusion that more than likely that the, this object was just a pelican, you know, and that was you know the the, the reason that it was so close to the water, and uh, you know it, it it seemed to move in a very you know uh, almost like it had a life of its own, which you know if it was a bird, you know obviously you know we're talking about a, a living animal, and and that's what. It came to mind, you know, and, and another thing that frustrates me is that, what, is this the kind of strategy that, that these guys are going to follow, that delivering only this kind of material, mm-hmm. very short, very doctored uh, videos that, by the way, as far as I know, the Pentagon is still denying that they are releasing it. Yeah, yeah. Releasing it. Uh, they've been released by other people and some of these videos have been uh, you know circulating around the web uh, years before to the stars was uh, you know founded right so I don't know I mean this is not something that you know as someone who has seen hundreds of beautiful videos this is not not something that will really convince me you know I mean What's convincing or what's interesting about the video is, you know, the, the excitement, 
that you yeah, that you notice in, in 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 the voices of the people who are who are recording and who are tracking this thing, and they say, "Woohoo! You know, we got it." Mm -hmm. and, and at one point, someone says, "What the hell is it?" You know, which is the only thing that makes you wonder whether they know what they're tracking or not. You know. And but but you say what what you say is true, you know. That doesn't necessarily mean that what they were tracking was something anomalous. If they had shown me in the video that you know the thing disappears or then you know it goes and makes a a sudden ninety degree and turn, that will yeah. be okay, you know. Now now you get something. Now 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 it's getting interesting. Do you think that this is like the new kind of like? ufo meme or a you know like for a while it was alien mummies were the big thing floating around alien bones <laughs> now it's like uh these little short gun camera caught videos that really don't show very much it's a little tiny screen and it's like a little object moving and it's got some it's always gray footage taken from a gun camera on a jet and it's like the other one what is that what is that oh my god that's weird it's got to mm -hmm. be a blah 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 and that's where all these videos, at least for, uh, to the stars, seems like that's where they're going with this stuff. Um, do you think this is the new kind of, you know, meme kind of thing, UFO meme -y thing? <laughs> no okay. way, you know. I mean, it's it's uh, all these videos almost feel like a, a commercial, you know, for Raytheon, which is the company that builds these allegedly super, you know, uh, uh, advanced tracking systems that were used to 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 record mm. uh, these videos, right? And it, it's it's here's the other thing that bothers me. It's like like to the stars and 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 and, and these guys and and probably maybe maybe you know they're maybe they're consulted with Les Leslie Keen. It's almost like they're trying to, you know, get us all back to the 1950s. Like, get us all back to the first years in which the phenomenon was being, you know, uh, tracked or was being, you know, discovered by humanity. I mean, and, and then the, we go back to the golden years of the UFO age. Mm -hmm. The first... Uh, recorded interactions we we have is with, with military pilots, right? In World War II, you know, with the Foo Fighters. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, the, the case of Captain Mantell. So pilots are the like our first uh, witnesses of UFOs in the modern era. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, mm -hmm. with it, then we had, you know, the, the, the phenomenon became more more complicated because we had landings and we had close encounters of the, you know, second and third kind, and then we have abductions, and then it becomes too weird. And it's like these guys are wanting to say, oh, 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 okay, clean slate. Yeah. Let's start from scratch. Let's start with this thing almost as if, you know, the UFOs had just, uh, you know, appeared on our radar screens. And, and Is it working, though? Are people really... I don't know. Because really, know. these I mean, videos aren't telling us anything. They're always very grainy, you yeah. know, a couple of colors, usually very short. It's got something moving around the screen. Have any of you guys heard about or seen the uh, quote-unquote mysterious lights captured over Milwaukee? Uh, I think it was last week or the week before. Haven't seen it, no. You haven't heard anything about it? No. It's, it there's if you can find the video all over do a search if you want to for um strange mysterious lights captured over on milwaukee tv news there was a film crew that had a film uh, uh like the the tower cam running where they you know then the weather is coming next and it shows like a view of the city mm -hmm. there's these mm -hmm. lights that are swooping and diving and going all over the place and everybody's like that's a fleet of ufos and they they look rather like birds Mm. Somebody yep. went down to where it was actually. Yeah, I can't believe you guys haven't heard about this. And I, 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 I haven't seen the video, but I heard of it. I'm yeah, watching it, it now. Oh, well, they look like little shooting. Oh wow. Well, that's interesting. A film crew went down roughly to where it was at, and they went, "Oh look, it's a bunch of seagulls flying around, and the light is being captured off of the lights shining on the city hall." 
that are capturing the seagulls flying around. And people are like, no, 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 what are the streaks, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's like, well, that's a low-resolution camera, and it's capturing right. the streaks and the tails that are coming off of the birds and stuff. No. But this video is still being presented. It's Even though it's been explained, they're like, we're yeah. standing underneath the lights. This is what's going on. You know, It's still being presented as, no, this is a fleet of UFOs flying over Milwaukee. <laughs> does it, it doesn't look like your traditional UFO video, that's for sure. It no, just looks it like, yeah, like streaks in the sky. Yeah, that are They're kind of moving in, in uniform. Er erratically, exactly. yeah, sort of. So, but I tend to wonder if I'm talking too much on the show, but I tend to wonder if, <laughs> if this stuff is just like the new meme, the, the new UFO meme that's being thrown out there and to the stars is kind of at the forefront of it. The whole thing just reeks of like, you know, shtick, I guess. Well, yeah, it is because in a way, you know, let, let's remember, you know, to the stars is kind of like uh, sponsored or it's sanctioned. The whole thing is sanctioned by, uh, people in the, in the intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, world, you know, the, this, the, the Department of Defense is allegedly, you know, letting uh, the long and his people to, to, you know, run with this. But at and, the same and, time, aren't they denying it saying, no, we didn't release this? And... Well, they, they, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, true, good point. But, but I feel it's it's fair to say that they are behind it. And the reason why I feel that it's because it's kind of like promotional to them. It's like because in the end, what are they selling? They're selling the idea that the military is tracking this. Like the, the military is taking this seriously because it could be a threat. Like, hey, we got this, you know, whatever yeah. it is. You know, we're on top of it, and we're we're paying close attention to it. It's almost it's almost like uh, it reminded me of, of of something that Robbie Graham wrote about in his book Silver Screen Saucers. He he wrote about how uh, the, the the Air Force and the Pentagon were uh, and in the 1950s was very serious in trying to sh to doctor uh, the public perception of flying saucers. You know, so there was this uh, very popular. Uh, TV series called uh, the TV the 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 Steve Canyon TV show, which was based on a, on a popular comic strip. You know, this was the the the, the adventures of Colonel, Colonel Steve Canyon, who was a member of the Air Force. So one of their episodes was titled "The UFO Incident," I think, or "The UFO Case," and it received a lot of censorship on behalf of the Air Force. They they demanded endless rewrites until they were satisfied with it and even in the in the end they tried to stop uh cbs who was what who was the network that which was the network that was uh, producing the, the series from releasing it and in the end you know the producers released it almost at the end of the series you know almost as, a, as an act of defiance mm -hmm. but my point of, of of bringing this up is because of something that that Ravi wrote about uh, this case and on the other other cases in which the Pentagon are trying to, to, to influence public perception of the phenomenon. And I, I wrote about it on the Daily Grail. If, 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 if I may, I want to read it to you guys. Yeah, please do. So the, quote, the quote is, Demonstrably then, the U.S. government and military have acted to influence the content of UFO theme entertainment media products since the earliest years of the phenomenon. For the most part, these actions have been in line with Robertson Pyle's officially stated policy that UFOs are essentially non-existent and therefore should be debunked and demystified through media channels. Still in recent years, the DOD has seen fit to lend its support to a small handful of UFO movies, notably to those which downplay UFO conspiracy theories while emphasizing America's military prowess thereby encouraging recruitment among cinema goers. In the case of the Transformers franchise, the Pentagon provided support first and foremost for traditional military propaganda purposes. But its close involvement in the script writing process here also seems to have been exploited to cover its own back in regard to historical UFO secrecy and to otherwise, otherwise twist UFO, UFO lore in its favor. This, the same can be said of Battle Los Angeles and Battleship. 
both of which portrayed the U.S. military as cartoonishly heroic and more than capable of defending Earth from an alien, alien attack, despite the on-screen pent Pentagon's total lack of history with UFOs and extraterrestrial visitation. So, getting back to these videos, if you look them first and foremost as entertainment, because let's be honest, right now, more people are seeing more content on YouTube than on Hollywood, you know, or, 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 or in TV series. So if you see this as a form of entertainment that can be manipulated in order to tell a certain narrative, and the narrative here is, you know, the Pentagon is taking this seriously, but there is no such thing as, you know, a conspiracy with regards of, you know, withholding sent sensitive information from the public, you know, like, you know, I don't know, recovered crash saucers or, you know, even going with, with, with the crazy ass stories of, you know, secret deals with, with you know, between the, 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 the U.S. And, and, and some alien faction. What they're presenting us here is the idea that, no, 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 there's, there are no such, you know, shady deals with regards to the, the, the UFO program. And this is what their deliverance. And we, we, if we have withheld something, it's because it was necessary for the protection of the American public because, because we are being patriotic about it. Yeah, hmm. but on the whole, how many people, how many everyday Joes do you think actually see that stuff and go, oh, well, UFOs are out there and the government must be hiding or... You know, how other than people like us, the average everyday person, I really don't think cares too much about this stuff. They'll see it and go, oh, yeah, this is interesting. I guess aliens are out there, but I got to get up and go to work. Well, remember yeah. what we just discussed in the first story of, of this podcast, uh -huh. how, you know, people are actually have had uh, a lot of paranormal experiences, but they're afraid to, you know, tell them in their office or in their families Likewise, we could say that there are a lot of people who are interested in the UFO subject. Yeah, I guess you're right. They're afraid, to, they're afraid to bring it up, you know, in public or in openly. No? I'm so, just, so I'm always just, know. you know, there's so many videos that look fake. So I always tend to, when I see videos, think, oh, is it another fake video? Yeah, most of them are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, oh, it's another one. This has got to be because everyone I've seen, I'm like, oh, that's so obvious. And what's funny is, yeah, and and there's still people are like, look at this UFO. And it's like, dude, that's that's video editing. Mm -hmm. No, I don't CGI. know. Yeah, CGI. <laughs> you, guys, is, you guys are not, you know, really that, uh, you're not the target of this, right? True, true. You are people who have been studying these for decades, you know, for many, many years. You have seen dozens of videos so you can really say you know whether at first glance oh that looks faked or you know oh you know that's that's not you know the way that people report the, the, the ufos behave or whatever you know but what about a 15 year old kid who is you know secretly interested in this and they see that you know and maybe you know maybe they say hey i want to you know i want to to, to be able to go and see more of these UFO stuff, maybe I'll join the Air Force. <laughs> maybe. I don't know, I have a 12-year-old, and when he sees stuff like that, he thinks it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see them, you know, make, make like, another... No, okay. <laughs> just make another Top Gun movie. I mean, that seems like it's the far sure. easier way to get more people in there. You, you know, it's... Do, do you want quantity over quality, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, I just, now we're, we're, t we're having, you know... Uh, President Trump saying, you know, maybe we need a space force, you yeah. know, and even the, 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 the head of the Air Force said, you know, that it's probable that inevitably, inevitably space is going to be militarized. Oh, yeah. So probably they're, they're, they're talking about taking precautions and, 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 and having defenses in case, you know, China starts to shoot down U.S. Uh, satellites, you know, because our economy is now so dependent of telecommunications. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, it's obvious that if, if you, it's something that Robbie also talks in, in, his, in his book, Silver Screen Saucers, you know, if you 
run out of enemies to shoot down here on Earth, you know, what better way, way to keep, you know, with your industry, but that giving people the, 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 the fear that maybe there's someone up there that is not, has, doesn't have our best intentions, you know, mm. you know, and, and maybe we have to take care of them too. And, you know, that's why we need to build these, you know, revamped Star Wars program that is going to cost a trillion dollars, but, you know, it's necessary in order to keep the American people safe. So there is uh, one of the things that they mentioned in that article that we started with. Uh, Such experiences are surprisingly common. Based on population research, more than half the people in the Western world have had at least one experience that might be called paranormal. Uh, The researcher says that in Finland, these are as common as arrhythmia, with as much as 40% of the population reporting them. And that's just reporting them. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's a high number. It's not that, uh, you know, sparse of a number of people having these experiences. They just don't want to talk about them. I can um, see that. Dig today. I got a thing uh, with a bunch of articles in it. And the top one is don't sleep on the alien alloys. And it says, perhaps remember all the way back in December when the freaking New York times reported on a Pentagon program dedicated to researching the existence of UFOs. Um, yeah. and it says, not only was it insane that our very own government felt it necessary to spend $22 million to determine if we have been visited by beings from another planet, and I would say right there they're, they're off the, the mark, uh, but that the Pentagon had physical evidence, materials, materials that baffled our nation's top people, the alien alloys, that something unknown to us had been here. But of course they're automatically going to aliens, to extraterrestrials. They're not looking at it like, okay, well, there's something anomalous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you never heard much more about that. No. That's it. That's the thing yeah. that every like everybody focused in on that that was in this stuff is like, we don't care about the alien footage. What are these alien alleys that you're talking about? What is yeah. this physical? You have something. Well, don't yeah. look at that. Look over there. It's Elvis. You know, exactly. yeah. <laughs> that kind of di- that kind of just kind of went away and you never heard anything more about that. It's like, well, I don't want to see gun grainy footage. I want to see what is this stuff? Is it plastic? Is it metal? What What do you got? You know, yeah. don't just. Yeah. Or was that the intention? We'll give everybody a little tiny snippet of information to keep them occupied on that, but never tell what it is. You want to see it live in a museum on cameras, right clear with someone in their hand and talking about it. Well, it reminds me of the uh, footage. The the alloy or the 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 reformed metal that was supposedly found at Roswell. You know, it's it, it it harkens back to that for me. You know, it's like, all right, well, we'll just give everybody this little morsel. We'll give everybody this little this little marshmallow from the Lucky Charms and give everybody else the rest of the Lucky Charms. But we're not going to give them the marshmallow that's in it. I don't, I don't, <laughs> see, I don't think there I'm was going anything. going back to my childhood now. I don't, no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anything all that anomalous out, out of Roswell. I think that was probably something of ours that, that exploded. Or, well, or, as, is, Kiel, though, or just, as Kiel suggested, a Fugo balloon. It just reminds me of the, and there was this metal that you could bend it and it would shit back into its own shape and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just, it harkens back to that. We have this anomalous alien metal substance. And by the way, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, well, no, what about that? Let's talk about that. Yeah, maybe the reason why they don't talk uh, more about it is because of of, of what Dr. Vallée has found out with his own, you know, uh, research of UFO ejecta, which I talked about to him, you know, last year. Mm-hmm. And, and and the results he was obtaining is that these uh, metal samples were neither extraterrestrial in origin. I mean, they were made of exotic, exotic metals or, the, 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 or, you know, they weren't from meteors, nor they, they were typical, you know, uh, earth, earth uh, metals. They're, they're, what is it, the name? They're, they're isotopic structure. They're, as, they're isotopic ratio, ratio alluded to the fact that they seem to have been re-engineered at the molec- molecular level. Mm-hmm. For what re- whatever what reason, they, they, they didn't know. But it's almost like they, they, someone, you know, re-engineered these, these metals, you know, at the very... Uh, as, at their very you know, molecular structure. And that's when I, uh, I ask him, okay, so are we talking about an, a force or an intelligence that is capable of 
transforming energy into matter instantaneously and vice versa? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. So we're not, uh, to me, we're not, when I, I hear this, I don't, I don't see an unobtainium that is, you know, I was going to say that useful to create an, a spaceship. <laughs> I see further evidence that the UFO phenomenon is, is not uh, extraterrestrial in origin, that we're seeing, you know, something that comes to our reality or our dimension. And whenever they need to, they, they go and materialize their a flying saucer or maybe, you know, they materialize some couple of alien bodies in order to occupy and interact with us whenever huh. they see fit. That's interesting. Um, I was going to say something to follow that up, and I completely forgot what it was. They're um, called it, demons. It's, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, th well, there's, there's also I, the possibility. I've, I've thought about it, you know, too, in, in, in a recent article for the Daily Grail, you know, that maybe there's a reason why so many ancient de deities demanded blood sacrifices. You know, maybe they, blood is the way that they, you know, ha used to restock of, of the raw materials in order to you know, 3D print bodies whenever they need to. I don't know if you, if, I, almost at, at, the, at the risk of, uh, of spoiling it, you should watch one of the latest Netflix sci-fi movies, An Annihilation. Annihilation, I thought that was in the theater. It, it is in America, but not overseas or not oh. outside of the US. If you have really? a, yeah, if you have Isn't an IP that... shield. Yeah, it, it just came out, but it's it's available on Netflix like outside of America. Isn't that Natalie? Isn't yes. that the Natalie Portman movie? Okay, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right, um, go watch it, and then you want to say, "Oh my God, this is so much about Skinwalker Ranch." <laughs> Did you, you read you the book by chance? No. Okay. You also can't throw out the concept of a breakaway civilization being behind some of this stuff too. That's using a technology sure. we're not familiar with. Sure. You know, they may have stuff that we simply don't because they took science yes. in a different direction. Um, and the country is called Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so, so speaking of alien hoaxes, which I, I don't really consider this a hoax. I should take that back. Um, scientists have analyzed the genome of the At Atacama alien, which is the small, like how, how it was, it was nicknamed Atta. It was about mm -hmm. six inches long, I believe. Yeah. And it, it was the subject of Greer's documentary on this because he insisted this much be an alien because it has the elongated head. It looks, it vaguely resembles a gray, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it turns out the thing really is rather, uh, I, I mean, it's sort of tragic, but it's also fairly interesting. It's not, uh, let me get to the full article here. Like it had a, a number of unusual deformities all mixed together, which is not normally seen. Uh, how a fetus hardened so many genetic defects, however, is likely to remain mysterious. And thanks, things just opened up and moved all the text. Uh, considering that no sane people have come forward, or, forward with insider knowledge. Um, while we can only speculate as to the cause for multiple mutations in Atta's genome, the specimen was found in La Norla, one of the Atacama... Atacama, Atacama, sure. Deserts, many abandoned <laughs> nitrate mining towns, which suggests a possible role for prenatal nitrate exposure leading to DNA damage. So basically, it was it was rather uh, unusual. The full genetic analysis, and if the page would stop moving as it opens and closes videos, <laughs> um, this is on IFL Science, which I, obviously we know what that stands for. Um, Compared the DNA sequences from those from both healthy and disease references proves that Atta is a female of the South American descent and strongly implies that she was preterm birth with a severe form of skeletal dysplasia and a bone aging disorder that caused early growth plate fusion, which is one of the arguments that Greer used saying, well, look, this thing has to be like nine years old. But apparently it was not, and they determined it was not, but they didn't really understand how that could be because of the the, uh, the fusion and everything. So it wasn't a hoax. I mean, it's a legitimate anomaly. And uh, and I I was saying that all along, along, that no matter what it is, it's, it's definitely unusual. It's sort of like the Star Child skull. No matter what it is, 
although I don't think it's a gray alien. It's it's definitely unusual in its in its anomalies. So, but even if it's you know, even if it was a, a true alien sample, how do you determine that? Yeah, you can't yeah. unless you have another alien sample to compare it with. And that I was mean, the and that was the point I made to uh, who had the star child skull. Um, he passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, when he was on, you know, I said to him, well, even if you do have an alien skull, you can't prove it because you have no alien to compare it to. You know, we don't even know that gray aliens exactly. exist. And his response yeah, we'll was. come back as anomalous DNA. DNA is what right. Back his, his response was, well, we do have a gray alien skull. And I kind of paused and went, we do. He said, yeah, the star child skull. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Was that Lloyd Pye? Yes. Lloyd Pye, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I liked Lloyd, but clearly he was so stuck on the idea that this was absolute proof that this was, you know, a gray alien, that that's all that was acceptable to him. Yeah. It's, well. Yeah, like I mean, said. playing devil's, devil's advocate here, I mean, how many, uh, quote unquote, uh, you know, genetic deformities will you need to find in order to say, you know what? Maybe this is something truly, you know, out of this world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think a decent number is going to be there, obviously. They found seven here, you know, that, that mm -hmm. they never found. And, and, and that is the problem because it's if you find that, the, 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 that this thing has human DNA, you know, let's say, okay, well, you, people will say, okay, case okay, closed. But then, you know, Stephen Greer will say, aha, you know, this is proof that aliens, you know, created human beings and therefore we descend from, you know, alien beings right. and therefore we, we are of a star origin, you know. And, and that's, there's the, the, the circular reasoning and there's just no way around it, you know. Yeah. Well, that's because belief well, trumps data. I was going to say, maybe not for them. There's no way around it. <laughs> and this, this is always a problem. People want to believe certain things and they're not. They're not looking at the data. They don't care about the data. They care about what they believe in proving what they believe. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like, you know, ghost hunters going out on a ghost hunt and they're like, well, we're using scientific tools. And it's like, right. But science says yeah. you find the anomaly yeah. first and then you work up the theories. You don't go out with the theory of ghosts are dead people and then yeah. go looking for them. Yeah. Kind of like the movie I'm going to be going and seeing tomorrow about aliens and demons. What's that? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 the documentary. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't go out thinking they're demons, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the whole thing with the ETH, the extraterrestrial hypothesis, is that it's, it's the assumption that they're extraterrestrial first, followed by how do we prove they're extraterrestrial to the people who don't believe, rather than saying, okay, let's look at all the data and see what, you know, how, how all this fits together. And, of course, when you do that, you end up with a bigger mystery than you started with. Mm -hmm. or um, you could just be in the skeptical community and say this is all crap and none of this is real and if you believe in it you're silly and that's just sure. just just as disingenuous as as either side you know exactly yeah. and and even though you say that there was no hoax or i i do feel that the greer uh in intentionally exploited whatever uh anomalies there were there were in these uh poor child yes for his you know for his uh, financial benefit Absolutely. you know whatever thing that that nolan find which by the way I mean, nolan is part of the to the stars team you know which which is interesting but whatever weird thing he found greer said aha right yeah so this is proof you know that that we are right you know and and if you can bet that there, he will find a way to spin this further, you know, even after Nolan said, no, you know, I'm convinced this is, you know, human being well, case closed. That happened a couple of years ago with that alien mummy baby that was going on, that big whole thing down in your part of the country where they had the big yeah. expo. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and even, slides, yeah. even when it came out, no, this said, the slide says right here, blah, blah, blah. And they were, they still tried to carry it on for a little while until eventually yeah. they couldn't take that course any further. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, like that's how this stuff always works. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a mummy of a small child. But the yeah, thing exactly. is, they even, they even did photo analysis of it. It says right there in the picture 
what this is. And it's 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 right here at this location inside of this museum. And they were like, no, 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 it's it's blah blah blah. That's not what it is. No. Well, it's well, not well, the fact well, that Tom Carey and, and Don Schmidt have, have not been, you know, booth out of the UFO field for the opt-in time mm. is proof that, you know, nothing will, you know, there there's no gr- mortal scene to be committed yeah. in, uf- in ufology. Well, but but keep in mind, just because a plaque says it's something, you could argue that, well, they didn't know what they had. Sure. But, sure. You, you know, I mean, the minute you looked at that thing, you knew it was a mummy, you know, and, and none, yeah. none, none of their, this is the Roswell no, alien remember, made any sense. Mm-hmm. Remember, they were said that this was from the Roswell wreck, wreckage. Yeah, yeah. You know, that this was yeah. taken in some secret base. Mm-hmm. Military base in in Bright Patterson or whatever, and that uh, uh, the 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 woman I, I remember her name that who took that picture who was buddy buddy with with uh, Eisenhower was yeah. probably you know in the know, but it turns out you know this was just part of some kind of holiday trip they made he she made with her husband in, when they went to the the. I don't remember that the the museum, the Mesa Bird, the museum, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the premise, the, the will to believe that these guys have. And uh, some people have said, well, you know, it's because uh, the guy who found the slides, like they, he, uh, he duped them. You know, he wasn't being, you know, totally forthcoming with information and he had things and they, he forced them, forced them to uh, sign non-disclosure papers. And they would say, okay, so don't follow the, that game. You yeah. know, it, it's, well, it's also, what was that guy that kept saying he had Bigfoot's body in a freezer oh. and it turned out, you know, and that guy just for the longest time, that guy just kept popping up. Okay. You, you caught that was wrong, but this time, yeah. this yeah. time, yeah. this is what it bad. is. Yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with the whole, with those, you know, with all this ufology stuff. All right. That time it wasn't this or, well, no, this is somebody's going in and manipulating our data and this is a private and this is a different research firm and it's the research firm that we found and we're going to go through it this way. And now it's been peer reviewed by other scientists. So, you know, it's real. Because they try to do the little loophole of peer review. Well, we've had our scientists look at it. It's kind of like, no, no, it doesn't work that way. But you still no. have the people that are like, yeah, yeah, that's see, it's been peer reviewed, so so you know it's accurate. You well, you know it, you know. Well, and that's the mummy thing down in in Peru. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. oh, it's been our, our scientists have said this. Great. Can other scientists look at it? No, no, yeah, no. <laughs> then it's not peer reviewed. <laughs> not <Exactly>. really. If <laughs> so. exactly. But but I, I I say the the that Otto wasn't a hoax in that a lot of people were saying it was uh it was a fake, where it really was an actual corpse and yes Greer, Greer you know utilized it to make his movie and everything else and when the movie turned yes. out to be nothing, you know at the very end they they they, do, they spend an hour and a half getting to the end where they basically say it had human DNA and then just move yeah. on and just kind of ignore the fact that that was the case it's like wait a minute. And it is, it's going to human DNA. What was that, sir? It's going to right. human DNA. Could you say that one more time? <laughs> it's going to human DNA. <laughs> well, and yeah, it's, it's just like, wow. What a, what a wonder, letdown. When are these people going to go away? You know, because. Not as long I've as they can make money at it. 20 wow. years, and I just keep waiting for these people to go away, and they just keep coming back like a bad rash. Mm hmm. Well, to you be know. honest, you know, nobody's paying that much close attention to Greer after the long announced uh, To the Stars initiative. Well, mm-hmm. is To the Stars the next wave of this kind of stuff, though? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I think, you know, people like that, they probably just look at trends and hypes and they get in on it. And people easily forget the past humans have really short memories and if they just get in on certain trends when things are going and they use their name and write a book people will buy it well it's like i said earlier if somebody if somebody really had an experience and they're looking for acceptance and then something like this comes along which valid it gives them something to believe in yeah. It's it's like politics and religion. They're going to believe in it no matter what. They're going to yeah. stand behind it to the very end, no matter how yeah. how nutty it is or whatever it is. And, you know, it's it's you know, wh- where do you want to hang your hat on? You know, where do you want to hang it? And that is mm-hmm. part of the problem. So much of this is driven by belief. People whether it be 
belief people believing this is all alien or alien or, or demons or whatever they've they've they're coming into it first with the thing they want to believe or in the case of the people who probably think it's all demons the thing they're afraid that it is um and some of them are are obviously just manipulative and they're trying to to bring in money or bring people to the church or gain power over people in some way but some of them i, I most of them i would say probably really come in with a set belief and instead of looking at the data and then trying to see, okay, what makes sense to this data, they're saying, here's what it is. How can I make the data fit into this hole? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes so, I, I fantasize with, uh, with the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, I, I fantasize about thinking, what if I was uh, a character, I'm, I'm a UFO that people who knows about UFOs, or I'm a UFO investigator. What would I would I say to someone like Roy? You know, the, mm. the character played by Richard Dreyfuss, who is you know really out of his rocker after having this amazing experience, and that puts his whole life into a spin. You know, yeah. he loses his job, he loses his wife and his family. You know, he's completely obsessed. You know, he he wrecks his house. What if what would I have this been what, something? <laughs> what would I say to someone like him if he came to you with uh, to me, you know, looking for answers, like saying, "Hey, I saw this. Am I crazy?" You know, maybe I said, "Yeah, you're not crazy, but you shouldn't get up so obsessed with it either." Right. Uh, but at the same time, if I if I say that to him, you know, then he misses his chance to go into the mothership with the aliens, you know, and become, right. you know, <laughs> the first envoy to the stars. So, so it's a nice, it's a nice thought experiment. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, well, let, let, let's look at this one. And Melissa, you posted this, which was a follow-up to another article. How did astronaut DNA become fake news? Mm-hmm. It's and, that one where, yeah, go ahead. So, so you, you had two twins. One of them was on the International Space Station. One was down here on Earth. So they used it uh, and checked what kind of physical changes that these two astronauts would have after one was in space for a year. And they found a few different things. Um, but but the, the way that it was phrased, and this, this comes down to scientific misunderstanding, they were saying, uh, you know, the, the news articles were saying 7% of Scott's DNA changed. Uh, but if 7% of Scott's DNA changed, he would be a different species. Yes. Um, what it is, is there's a few, there's 7% of the genes didn't return to their, pre, uh, what is it? It was gene expression, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it says if 7% of Scott's genetic code changed, as some of the stories suggested, he'd come back an entirely different species. The misinterpretation of the study's results spread like wildfire. Um, the Google News highlighted a mix of inaccurate and accurate reports. Uh, Mark and Scott Kelly are still identical twins, NASA said. Scott's DNA did not fundamentally change. What researchers did observe are changes in gene expression, which is how your body re reacts to the environment. This is likely to, this likely is within the range of humans or humans under stress, such as mountain climbing or scuba diving. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. So, so when after your body experiences extreme changes that it's not used to, basically. Right. Right. Yeah. And whereas that's still interesting, it's not. Yeah. It's not quite the the spin that yeah. the media put on it. He yeah he didn't come back back a reptilian monkey. Right. Well right. maybe <laughs> if he, he stays there another more year. I mean, you know what this reminds me of? Reminds me of story of uh, uh, Jana, you know that uh, Almashti woman that was captured in a, in a Rus Russian village in the 19th century. Uh, yeah. And then this guy, uh, what, what was it? Professor Sykes, uh, found apparently remnants of one of, he, of her descendants, and he analyzed them and, and determined that uh, uh, Jana's DNA was human, but was from Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. So... He he speculated that uh, Jana was probably you know and an, an some escaped slave, yeah. And I remember people in cryptozoology you know saying, well you know case closed. You know Jana was not uh, you know a, a wild woman or was not uh, uh, you know like a, 
uh, some kind of like Sasquatch kind of uh, unknown hominid. But to me, it says, wait a minute, you know, maybe it, it, whether the fact that Jana's uh, DNA is indistinguishable from human DNA doesn't mean that the way that the, her DNA expressed, you know, and, and epigenetically, that maybe that's what caused her, her, uh, her you know, peculiar trait, you know, she, she, uh, she was, you know, completely covered in hair, in, in mm -hmm. red hair, according to witnesses. She was very, very strong. And, 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 and uh, you know, she, she, she couldn't stand being, you know, indoors and all of that. So it, it makes the case of, you know, maybe Sasquatch is, in, in, for all terms and purposes, completely uh, human, genetically speaking, but uh, the way that, that, that uh, his DNA expresses, you know, makes, makes, makes him, you know, physiologically, morphologically, Totally different from a human being, you know. It's it's it's. Uh, uh, I lost my train of thought here, but it's it, it's the expression of the genes that 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 is what what's important here. Yeah. What's really cool, it, it's not. It wasn't really fake news to me. What I found fascinating is the ability for the human body to say to adapt to be able. Like what, what, I believe it was his telomeres that changed. Yes. And yep. that the telomeres are what control our aging and everything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty wild because we've been all looking that the, where's the fountain of youth? Where's the fountain of youth? Well, it, it could be space, you know, but <laughs> what's cool is, is that yep. that radical of a change happened in that period of a time because of the environment that he was in, which gets you thinking, all right, we're going to be sending people to Mars who are going to be in this weightless kind of environment or theoretical weightless in some areas, gravity environment to where, you know, when they get out there and then they get back and when they come back, if they come back, you know, um, what, how, how different will the human species be? It reminded me, I read a story of a girl that lived in Africa and she actually, her body, she was, she would spend a lot of time climbing in trees and jumping around and stuff. And then when they actually checked her out, her body had adapted, her, her fingers had grown longer. I think her arms had grown slightly longer. Her body was adapting to her playing in trees all the time it was genetically you know, for i guess it would be genetically but her whole body was just adapting to her doing this and no not paranormal but still extremely cool yes you know like okay yeah. so this guy goes into space and all of a sudden his telomeres and his body change and that's to some degree the body going okay you know what are we doing here what's going on let's see how we can change and make things work or th how 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 would it? if he would stayed up there longer i've been curious you know, I want more study in this. What 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 was happening to him? This this also feeds into my tongue and cheek theory that the Earth is slowly eating us, and that's why we age and die. Yeah, the Earth is toxic. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, oxygen I'm, is actually bad for the human body. Yeah. It makes you age. I'm <laughs> reading something here that it's saying that to track the physical changes caused by space, scientists measured Kelly's metabolites, his cytokines and his proteins before, during, and after his mission, the researchers learned that space flight is associated with oxygen deprivation stress, mm. increased inflammation, and dramatic nutrient shifts that ex affect the gene expression. So it doesn't sound like for the better. No, especially yeah. with inflammation. Yeah, so that's what happened. That's, exa that's what they're saying it's more specifically in this other article. Mm. So there you go. But is it a matter of your body doesn't need this anymore, so we're going to adapt you in a new way to um, accentuate the know. things that your body does need? It, it, um, well, I, I don't mean, know. not to sound like a Nazi scientist, but what is the, where does this go? I'm kind of curious to find out where it takes, you know, what well, the next process is. I mean, is. those, I guess maybe you'd have to stay up there longer. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, protein, I mean, it's very important and inflammation. And I mean, that you're going to break down faster and come down with diseases more well, rapidly also the fact with, that, it, with uh, inflammation. And, and maybe it's not just uh, the fact that he was in outer space, right? Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he is in such a, a, a stressful environment. I mean, the, the, these people are literally yeah. in a slim tin can. You know, mm -hmm. in which yeah, they're in a, a hamster habit trail. 
I'm just, I'm wondering if it's the la you know, the changing gravity that's doing it. That's, that's what I was too. thinking. Yeah. 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 Because your body doesn't yeah. have to deal with supporting its own weight anymore. Yeah. So your joints are going to break down. Your muscles are going to break down. Your body's not going to send the protein to those muscles anymore because it's not yeah. using those muscles. So it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, do whatever it's necessary to do. When you, th you know, it's kind of like, well, maybe that's why the grays are the way that they are because they spend so much time in space that they don't need that body weight or whatever. Like, or, like, or, or those aren't real physical creatures. Maybe they're yeah. demons. <laughs> so we actually we actually interviewed somebody on our show that was saying they're more like um artificial intelligent. But I don't know if that's true. That was his theory. I, I just <laughs> don't think they're actually physical grays. I think the grays are what mm -hmm. you encounter in the altered state of consciousness. Ah, interesting. But I can't prove that either. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best evidence for that is the fact that you do see them in EMT so, encounters if, and you yeah. see them on cave paintings, which, of course, the ancient yeah. astronaut theorists jump to and be like, oh, look, you know, there's there's grays in these cave paintings. They, they, they were here then, but those cave paintings are usually done by shamans who are going into altered awesome. states of consciousness. Yeah. Well, basically, if you don't arth want arthritis, don't do space travel. <laughs> <laughs> I would think arth I would think That's arthritis would be fine in space, but it's when you come back into a gravity environment yeah. that the arthritis is going to kick then in. Then you have that contrast, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Because when you're in space, you've got no weight. The arthritis you're, is you're like, you're affected like by gravity's pull. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I've got arthritis in my leg, and I'm thinking, man, if I'm in space and I'm weightless and I don't have to worry about my leg supporting any weight, I'm probably not going to feel that much pain through my arthritis. No. But when I come back to Earth, then I'm going to get gravity sickness. That's going to suck. It's funny how <laughs> when you come back, that's when I, you would think having that alleviation in space would actually – maybe even help heal you or repair you and be okay when you come back. But I guess not. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I'm interested in what is the telomeres, what, what is causing the telomeres to change like that? What is, what is it about the spatial effects that, Yeah. you know, is it, is being in space going to allow you to live longer or for what, for whatever reason? Cause gravity is not pulling. I, Cause I agree with you. I think a lot of the effects are a, the, air that we breathe in and be the dramatic the effect of gravity just pulling at us the whole time well mm -hmm. when you're in space you you're you're the air that you're taking in is different probably recycled mostly but to a greater extent you don't have the gravity you don't have the forces pulling on you okay. to the extent yeah when it says here like one of the important changes was the hypoxia the cells was due to uh, deficient amount of tissue oxygenation probably due to the lack of oxygen and high levels of carbon dioxide. So the tissues in the body need the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that, and that's probably why you're like, you made the comparison with mountain climbing and thing like things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Caps at the end of the chromosome are considered marker. Yeah. So they're talking about the telomeres. This is actually a really good article. It gets into <laughs> big detail. So I think he was <laughs> they also. They gave you this one. <laughs> when he came back from space, he was either taller or shorter i can't remember which yeah. way than there was his brother was there was first there was a significant increase in average length while he was in space and then there was a decrease in the length within about 48 hours of his landing yeah mm. the compression on the yeah. spinal column mm -hmm. wow that's that is fascinating all right and so speaking of feet um uh, were we speaking of oh, feet God. at any point um <laughs> <laughs> no, the human, uh, and I know I covered this with John Lorden at one point, the human feet that routinely wash ashore in the Pacific Northwest explained, and this comes off Vox.com. Uh, it says the 13th human foot in a decade washed up on the shores of British Columbia, Canada this month. The lone foot, lone left foot wore a white sock inside a black Velcro athletic shoe and was still attached to its lower leg bones, the tibia and the fibula. Mike Johns, 56, found it sitting in a bed of kelp while walking on the beach with his dog, Taz. Um, if you're wondering whether feet washing up on beaches in this particular coastline is a thing, well, it is. It's been a source of it fascination is. for Canadians, Americans, and the media for years. It has its own Wikipedia page, etc. The British Columbia Coroner Service, the people you call if you happen to find a disembodied foot, even made this handy map last year before the most recent <laughs> foot was discovered, and it's a little map of where all the feet have been discovered in this one particular area. Um, although morbid and grisly, there's nothing sinister about these finds. According to scientists and health officials, they aren't the handiwork of a serial killer or the remains of a plane crash victims. Instead, several innocent scientific phenomena converge to periodically deposit human feet 
on the shores of the Salish Sea, the body of water between Vancouver and Seattle that includes the Puget Sound and the Strait of Georgia. Uh, basically, what it says is that feet have a tendency to come off in the water yeah. eventually. And that was, that was something we knew. Um, the weird thing is why they always end up on the shore of the Salish Sea. And it says, uh, and you know, not other areas like San Francisco Bay or New York City, et cetera, et cetera. It said things that float on the ocean surface move with the currents, but are also pushed a bit by the wind. And this can be significant in getting them closer to shore. Uh, the prevailing winds here around the Salish Sea are east to west, so stuff floating in this part of the Pacific gets blown to the coast effectively. Nonetheless, body parts have washed up on Rio, in Rio de Janeiro near the beach volleyball courts before the 2016 Olympics. Um, so it, it's, it's weird, but it looks like they're, they're, they're getting to the point where they can explain what's going on. I mean, the feet disarticulating wasn't that much of a mystery because, as I said, in, in water it's well known that, especially with the shoes on, the feet are going to come off. Mm-hmm. And, and they're going to float. They'll float because of the, the foam the shoe. in the shoe. Yeah. 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 So uh, it's just a matter of why they were ending up there, but it looks like it's mostly just a matter of currents. Mm-hmm. Yes. Still weird. Uh, it is. I've heard, I've heard of this, you know, f- oh gosh, for for years, and there everybody had this theory around here because I live on Vancouver Island that it was, you know, people trying to, you know, uh, illegal immigrants or something silly like that. But, you know, I rev- I've read articles where it was identified as, you know, people who were suicidal, like jumping off a bridge and their body went missing and, uh, you know, really tragical, tragic and sad stuff like that. And so it's kind of, um, there is a gruesome background to it, just kind of sad background to a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. I and I think one of the main theories being floated around is that it was uh, suicides from a nearby bridge. Yep. Yeah. Um, um. All right, and I think we have one left. Is there only one? This one's not. It isn't what it seems. Um, from the Economist, it's an article entitled "America's Flat Earth Movement Appears to Be Growing." Oh uh, boy! <laughs> all around the world. Yep. <laughs> all corners. But here's here's the thing that bugged me about this. I mean, we know about the whole flat Earth movement. We've joked about it on this show. You've joked about it on your show, Ro. Mm-hmm. Um, flat if, hollow Earth. Uh, I believe the flat hollow. hollow I'll, 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 t- I'll take the hollow Earth over the the flat Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, on November 9th, five hundred flat Earthers assembled in North Carolina for the first ever annual flat Earth International Conference. Data from Google Trends shows that in the past two years, searches for flat Earth have more than tripled. Um, and then he, this, this, however, is where it starts bugging me a little bit. So up to that point, yeah, all right. And then it says conspiracy theories are normally harmless. The bogus notion that vaccines cause autism has led to a decline in immunization rates in some places, which has allowed outbreaks of measles. Okay. Um, there are some people who would argue that for, for various reasons, but then it says skepticism about climate change has infiltrated schools. A recent survey... A recent yep. survey has found that a third of American science teachers tell their students that climate change is driven in part by natural causes, which is actually true. Yep. So the economist is here trying to push this idea that there is no natural cause in climate change. They just kind of slide that in there, like believing that there's a natural cause to climate change is a conspiracy theory. Yet there is plenty of evidence to support that that is very much the case, that the the Earth goes through cycles of climate Mm -hmm. change. It just might be happening that we're speeding it up a little bit more than it would be. Everything everything affects everything else. And, you know, my way of looking at it is even if we are not affecting Mm -hmm. the climate, we're still polluting. And the solution to stopping affecting, potentially affecting the climate is to clean it up. So it's a win-win, really. The only people losing yeah. out are the people who, you know, the corporations who are making money polluting. But, like I heard that even like I don't know if this is true because it was that I've heard this a long time ago, but that even like other planets were heating up a little bit. Yes, not yeah. just the Earth. Because mm-hmm. because it, it's I don't effect- know. I don't know. I don't want to get into like oh I don't believe in that we're causing it or anything crazy. But I I did read that somewhere. Yes. Oh, uh, so w- yeah. what happens is the sun, has, oddly enough has a massive effect on our environment. Uh, if you, no. if, Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I actually got uh, 
I had posted something about it. Um, or no, I guess I was discuss trying to discuss this with someone online, and I said, "Look, you know, I'm not arguing that there's not climate change. There's obviously climate change. Uh, anyone who lives on this planet can attest to that, unless they're completely uh, in denial." Um, I said, "The thing is, though, some of this climate change is <laughs> many caused- are though. That's the problem." <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. said, the, the thing is, some of the climate change, at least, is caused by natural cycles driven by the sun. And he wrote, the sun has no effect on our climate. Yeah, that's why we um, grow crops and everything to it and all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and someone else on my friends list, like, rewrote that, followed by, oh, my God. <laughs> this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is belief. Yes. You're going to believe whatever you want to believe, regardless of what is proven out there. It's like when it's like when that one guy, Harold Camping, kept saying that the end of the world is going to come, the end of the world is going to come. And every time it would say it's come, it never did. Mm -hmm. And the believers of that faith would just double down on their belief. Right. Mm -hmm. You see it happening in politics literally right now in our country. Everybody just doubles down on what they, uh, you know, what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And you can't, um, it, it is strange to see the increase in this stuff. People believe in this stuff just because they can. The vaxxers, the vax, the, the flat earth people, okay, you're, you're humorous and funny to laugh at, I, whatever. The anti-vaxxers drive me up the wall in much the same way that the Sandy Hook was a staged thing and nobody actually died yeah. there. Those two groups drive me more insane than any other thing that I see on the internet. And you just can't, you can't get through to them. You can't, well, there's nothing you can say that you're going to, you're not going to yeah. want to argue with them. It's pointless to even try. But the, the economist seems to be blaming this on teaching analytical thinking in yeah. schools. That it's not, that that's why there's all these conspiracy theories. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean. I can see that. You know, so here, can, yeah. here is the, the, the one thing I can say about the anti-vaxxer movement. It has been shown that giving children immense amounts of vaccinations too close together can have ill health effects. Yes, mm-hmm. that's uh, fine. I and, understand that. Right, and that's something they should not do because a lot of times they just rush through them. Let's give them mm-hmm. all, the, all the vaccinations right now, and apparently it can cause, cause some harm. Um, but yeah, the logic, the site, the problem is there's a lot of non-scientific thinking behind this stuff. It's people who are not fully educated in this stuff. And I'm not well, a science doctor is the enemy. Or, so yeah, and that's part of it too, because you know, the, the, the powers that be have lied to us so much about yeah. so many things that have covered up so much that there are some people that simply don't trust it anymore. It doesn't matter what they say, yeah. they're lying for to us and they're trying to hurt us. Well, that's what you have. There's a couple of things here. You had like the situation that happened way back in the day where um, fat is bad for you. Sugar isn't bad. And now it's come the other way around. And what it was, was the sugar lobbyists were, you know, running and they, they skewed everything and people believed it because, well, they're saying it's what it is. Doctors are saying that it's, it's it's fat, not sugar. So go ahead and eat sugar. Well, tell me about it. I have the hardest time. I work in a fitness and I have the hardest time trying to tell people to add fat in their diet and take the sugar and bread out. (laughs) Yeah. Well, 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 fat's bad. That's why I drink low fat milk and blah, blah, blah. You know, and and, oh, and it's been so ingrained into everybody that it's just what you believe. And what it was is that people were bought to pay and bought and pulled and told to say this stuff. Bought. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't. It's 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 hard. It's like at that point, well, if scientists are saying this. Then what do I believe? What what should I believe? What yeah. shouldn't I believe? You know, so, it's it's. And unfortunately, now they believe that the Earth is flat. <laughs> well, again, it's it's a symptom of not believing anyone in authority. We're being lied to at all times. Um, um, I remember when I was young. Some of you will remember this. I'm I'm 45, but I remember when I was growing up. There was the big thing about the hole in the ozone layer. I was just yes. thinking about this yep. today. Yeah, totally remember that. And it was like, okay, we can't use these CFCs and these cans anymore. These can propellants. And the debate turned into even back then. Okay, we have tree huggers. There's nothing wrong with these cans. So who cares about this hole in the ozone? Well, eventually they stopped using it, and lo and behold, the ozone has since healed itself. But at the time. <laughs> I remember very vividly it was conservatives versus, um, you know, liberals. Well, we, we, this is garbage. There's the hole in the ozone could be cause it's, it was the exact same arguments that you're hearing on climate change today. And yep. 
I have friends that are younger than me or people that as, as she said earlier, I'm sorry, I just, my main, my main brain thought, I completely forgot your name, but you were saying earlier that, that people uh, have short memories and don't, you know, just don't yes. want to remember store for things that they, you know, they don't agree with. They don't want to remember. But I remember when I was a kid, the whole thing about CFCs and the ozone layer and all this, and people were like, no, this is stupid. We don't, you can't tell, you know, the companies were fighting it because they would have to go and change how they compress the stuff in their cans. Yeah. Now, yeah. all these years later, 20-something years later, the ozone layer was healed and or healing very, very well, and we're not using the same CFCs in the cans anymore. And, yeah. you and know, so that, so that was true, you know. <laughs> it was true, but there there is a natural flux, too, to the ozone layer. Exactly, which, again, ties into what we're talking about right now. Yes. So there, there is a little bit of both. This, this article continues, however, and it says... Uh, Conspiracy theories are appealing because they offer simple explanations for complex phenomena or because they let people believe they are in possession of secret knowledge that the powerful wish to suppress. They tend to be most popular among less educated people who do not trust public institutions, and they are extremely common in dictatorships where people assume, often correctly, that the authorities are lying. So there's, there's and at some- the same time, they try to convince you that a deep state is going on when they hear themselves part of the deep state <laughs> right well but, but here's here's the thing whereas you know as we just said some some of this stuff comes down to people not being very well educated in science not necessarily not well educated in general you can be fairly well educated and not really understand science very well um but this is the thing they basically have said here that if you believe in conspiracy theories you're probably not very well educated you're stupid that's why you believe in them mm-hmm. um, which is not true because the, so some studies have gone to show that people who are in the climate denial spectrum tend to be fairly more educated than the average mm-hmm. you know they are they are they are, they have college degrees and and they have uh, they, 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 they they study science so it's it's not that i am endorsing climate denial but what i'm saying is that it's 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 kind of ironic but the smarter you are the easier it is for the for you to delude yourself. Yeah, I can see that. Well, also, in my opinion, I think the whole climate change, the big thrust of it seems to be primarily in America. America has the most concentrated thing of climate change deniers. And I think a lot of that it purely comes down to politics. Yes. It, it's pretty much what it is. If you're a liberal, then you believe in climate change. And if you're not, if you're a conservative, then you don't believe in climate change. And if you're and, a liberal, if you're a liberal, you not only believe in climate change, but you do not believe in natural climate exactly. change. It's all us. And there's no question about it. You're not allowed to question that at all. God, exactly. it's so nihilistic. <laughs> it's like, it is. It's us, die, kill humans. Whereas most of the <laughs> rest of the world looks at America like, hey, you know, how, how, what's the matter with you people? How can yeah. you, you know, and we, we're kind of like, <sighs> stop or I'll shoot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what it is, you know, and it's, it's difficult for me because I am either conservative, Republican, I'm, I'm the middle guy that nobody really wants to listen to. Whereas I, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, too. some of this is real. Some of this is natural. And a lot of it we're causing. And when you present that, it's like, no, it's one or the other. And if you're not with me, you're against me, yes. which is how yeah. everything in this country has become at this point. So, you know, it's uh, where like, I don't know, um, red pill down in Mexico. What is the attitude down there? Since you're not part of the whole American dream thing. <laughs> Climate change is real and the green girls cost it. <laughs> exactly. That's pretty much exactly. the of it. We're like the only country left in the world. It's like, you know what? We're going to keep doing what we're doing. Is that because big business is very easy to manipulate? Like we have a lot of lobbyists here and there's a lot of people. Again, this borders on conspiracy theory. But, you know, let's be real. Lobbyists have a lot of power and stuff in this country. This can go down a very dark rabbit hole really fast, so I'm not going to elaborate on it. (laughs) But, um, you know, here it's, we're very much a divided country of you either with us or against us. And these are, depending on what news organization you listen to or where you go to get your news, that's what it is. So, you know, and I'm I'm in the same boat as you. Some of this is natural. Some of it's man-made and, you know, it's, it's, it's a fact because I live at where I live in Michigan. I grew up here. I remember winter times in Michigan being very much like Hoth and star Wars, you know, (laughs) now it's not so much, but you're also having, there's regions of uh, Alaska and the Northern countries and stuff where 
trees and forests are beginning to shift because they rely the plants would grow in the permafrost and now the permafrost is leaving mm -hmm. and whole forests are just collapsing because there's the way that they grow and stuff isn't being supported anymore and you can't it's it's so prevalent that you can't really deny it but no it's not happening it's not and if it is happening well it's just the planet doing it you know and, well it's it's it, it regardless of the cause it's it's going to result in uh, disasters worldwide as time goes on. Uh, well, it already is with the hurricanes yeah, and flooding. But it's going to get much worse. Sooner, and sooner than everybody thinks. Yes, because I, I, I think the that. mentality by now, even even among Americans that 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 wish to deny it, is yeah, maybe there's something to it. But thank God, it's going to happen way after I'm dead. Right. And but guess yes. what, guys? <laughs> that, that ain't going to happen. It's going to affect you before yes. it affects your grandchildren mm -hmm. yeah and, and even if you saying that it's like well i'll be dead but you know good luck to my kids yeah <laughs> and well, my grandkids is that, you know? yeah it's like um, oh well i won't be here <laughs> there was an article i saw recently about uh, the easter island statues the ones nearest the coast are now in danger because the the sea level has risen enough that it's starting to get into them mm -hmm. oh oh so they're they're looking to find a way to preserve those somehow. Uh, but you have you have islands out in the Pacific that are sinking. I mean, there's the, to to say there's no climate change is one of the most. It's it's not even ignorant. It's just stupid. Um, yeah. Like I said, you you can argue over the causes, but it doesn't change the fact that it's happening. And even if we are causing it, it's too far for us to turn around now and fix it. We can only slow it down. Um, yeah. But when you look at the natural cycles, uh, take someone like Randall Carlson, who's studied these cycles, and we are in that type of a cycle where things are getting warmer, where the, the climate is shifting warmer. In fact, it's actually been, uh, I think it's supposed to uh, drop colder at some point, too, but a lot of it has to do with sun output. And when we have a, the, the, what they call the little ice age back in, I think, the 1200s, uh, there were almost no solar flares. And... Things didn't yeah. get very warm at all. So there's a balance there. And, and as much as we're saying, well, you know, we don't want it to be all hot with everything melting, it could suddenly go the other way too, depending on solar activity. And they're always concerned now when they see the sun going into like a low period because they're like, oh, how is this going to affect us? I mean, we just got hit with a solar flare actually uh, yesterday, uh, the 23rd, I think they said uh, one was going to hit us. I didn't see anything from it. They were worried mm -hmm. it might knock out power in numerous places because it was a fairly big one. But uh, we neglect how much things like that have the potential to affect us. Well, at this point, we've got so much greenhouse gases in our environment that even if the sun did cut back a little bit, you know, it's the, the silver lining is it might help us out for a little yes. while. But yeah. when the sun does kick back up again... Then what happens? <laughs> you know, we, we needed you know, to deal. How do you get the heat out of the oven? <laughs> we we needed to deal with this, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, I, I disagree with the fact that we can, you know, stop it or 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 you know even you know try to uh, delay its effects. I even I I even disagree with the fact that we can ameliorate its effects. I think that what we have to do right now is uh, try to see how we're going to cope with it, with the fact that you know there there's going to be great amount of of uh, coastline that is going to disappear. I mean, yep. we could okay, sure, America and other countries could spend trillions of dollars trying to save Venice and try to save Miami Beach. Or we could try to see how we will use those resources in order to try to relocate people into more into into areas where that would not be affect some so affected by by floods and and, and other types of you know global superstorms that are going to become f uh, far more common. Well, you've and, also and, got. Are you guys familiar yeah. with the gyres at all? You know, do you guys know what the gyres are? Yeah, like the, like the, in the Pacific, the one where you know all the the, the, the floating traps. junkyards that are oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah 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 that's that's a that's a really big problem and it's only getting worse mm -hmm. where you go sure. out to these parts of the ocean that are they're massive giant whirlpools, but you go yeah. down a foot and they're just floating junkyards of plastic and residue and and junk, yeah. and um, you know that's a 
big, big issue because now it's beginning to affect our food and, and you know, everything we pull from the ocean and it's only getting bigger. Um, there was a thing recently where they were talking about how all these soaps with these little bath beads, these scrubbing bath beads and stuff. Oh, yeah. When you wash your hands, those go down the drain. Those bath beads weren't dissolving. They're micro yep. beads and they're getting into the water supply and out into the ocean and they're causing tremendous grief to the wildlife. And mm. that's a situation like with, with the, with putting CO2 into the atmosphere, we can make a dent on that. There's machines out there that pull the CO2 out of the atmosphere. We can move over to more climate friendly cars like hybrids and things like that. Getting people to agree that that's what we should do is the pro is a problem. But you have this other situation, like you have the gyres that are just floating junkyards in the ocean that are plastic stuff that doesn't biodegrade. That's just out in these oceans everywhere. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's scary, you know? Agreed. Yeah. yeah. It and is. nobody wants to deal with it because now nobody wants to uh, pick the tab. Yeah, the tab's going to be massive to do it. There's companies yeah. out there. There's there is actually companies out there now that are are making money off it. They're going out getting the stuff and they're recycling a lot of it. They're actually you know that's for things to change. We've reached a point now where there has to be some form of profit in it for us to be able to make. That's what you know. That's what will motivate the change. Yeah. Going to the going to Mars, going to the moon. If you come up with a way to make that profitable, watch how fast we start getting there. You know, watch. It's, it, there, okay, we go to the moon. We can get H three, which powers a lot of cool stuff, and we can do a lot of stuff with it. You know, that's you know, if, if we know for sure that we can get there and get it, that's what's going to get us to the moon. You know, yeah. it's not going to well, be tourism and all that. Maybe you know, maybe if some countries start to like. Uh, the countries that are more affected by climate change uh, start to sue, uh, you know, tra uh, 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 transnational corporations like I don't know Starbucks or, well, or McDonald's for uh, using so much plastic. The, I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think what you're going to see is other countries, since America's backed out of the climate accords, you've got a lot of countries that are now telling scientists, "Hey, come to our country. We'll pay you." And you're going to start yeah. seeing other countries that are going to develop. They're going to become leaders in this technology and doing these things. Yeah. Yeah. And America is just going to be left behind, you know, yeah. you got to, and that's just the way it's going to go because companies are going to say, Hey, there's a, there's a need for something like this. We can do this. Like the company I was telling you about, they have a machine that pulls, that pulls carbon out of the air and makes bricks yeah. out of it. And you can make homes out of these bricks. There's yeah. different people that are doing, you know, Tesla, you know, who can, who can make the best battery right now? for storing yeah. this kind of power. That's the kind of stuff. Those are the things that are going to lead. And since America's like, we're not doing this, all kinds of countries around the world are going, okay, we will. <laughs> yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Getting Let's back do this. to coal for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> and all the other countries, all right, fine, have your coal, you know, and that's only going to go so far. And what very well could happen is for the longest time, China was looked at as the country that was the dirtiest country in the world. And cause they were on the, now even China's getting on board and saying, yeah, we're going to do this too. We're going to, we're going to mm -hmm. leave that stuff behind and we're going to start advancing the technologies. You're going to have a technological war on that level. Who could build better windmills? Who can build better, cheaper solar panels? Who can do yeah. all of this stuff where America's just like, we need coal and guns. <laughs> Got the yeah. hate mail that uh, we're going to get from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, full disclosure, I am a gun owner, but I'm not going to go into that whole because that's a whole other can of worms. Yes. That's going to cause it's a problems. Show, <laughs> yeah, entirely, and a more political um, show. Yeah, and again, I'm I'm the guy that falls in the middle of all this. So, but yeah, it's you know it's sad because other countries are just going to leave us behind, and and people are going, scientists are going, things are happening. How how Tesla can be, the the Tesla company can be in America doing what it's doing blows my mind. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's well. crazy. All right. Well, uh, I think that was all the news stories I had. Uh, my my last comment on this this whole economist thing is that although you know their their more visible approach is let's let's talk about the flat Earth thing, they're sneaking in all these little shots at anyone thinking outside the norm, sure. which is pretty much exactly what they're talking about. In the first article we covered on the uh, the Finnish research project talking about the stigma of the paranormal, and in this case, conspiracy theories, or thinking outside of what is acceptable. You know, if you think outside of what's acceptable, you're stupid, you're uneducated, and that's simply not the case. Um, like. It says if schools were better at teaching analytical thinking, that might reduce the appeal of conspiracy theories. 
I don't know that that's necessarily true. Uh, I, I have for years said that I wish schools would teach kids how to think. Uh, I think it's incredibly important because people really, they, they don't get those critical thinking skills. And if they had them, I don't know that it would necessarily reduce conspiracy theories. I might, I think in some cases it might actually increase them. I think, I think maybe if the people trusted their government and there wasn't so many, um, corruptions, they, they might, they, that might be a better solution. I mean, alongside of teaching critical thinking. <laughs> but I, th- I think there are reasons for that we don't teach critical thinking. Well, yes. the, ter- the parents can, the teachers can teach the kids whatever they want. The problem is the kids have to go home. If you were yeah. taught in school, climate change is a real thing. Here is a science that backs it all up and the kid goes home and they have a very conservative family. Now forget everything you were taught in school today. Here's another weird thing. I'm going to bring this up. A little while ago, I'm not sure if it's still going on. There was a situation down in Texas with school books. Um, Texas being a very conservative state, they were having a hard time with the science books. So what happens is is the people who makes the textbooks, for practicality purposes and cost purposes, whoever orders the greatest number of textbooks is pretty much the textbooks that are going to go out to the rest of the schools for the curriculum. Right. So, mm. and what happened was, is these textbooks were teaching, they were cutting away, they, they were teaching more creationism. They were teaching less about evolution because that was what the, the Texas school board was aiming towards. Right. So the other school boards were having to buy those same kind of textbooks because for cost practicalities, well, we can produce 500 of these, but we're not going to produce a hundred of these for a school curriculum up in Michigan or say a more, another more liberal state or something mm-hmm. like that. So these wow. concepts and ideas were actually the, the politics behind them were actually seeping into the school textbooks and the textbooks yeah. that were being purchased. So the teachers are going to, I, I have a friend who has another podcast. He's a school teacher and he's one of the reasons he has a podcast is to deal with the things that he's not allowed to discuss and talk about in class for fear mm. of political backlash. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's very much comes down to, yeah, I can send my kid to a Texas school and they're going to learn more about religion and creationism and less about science or the kind of science that I want them to, to be taught. You know, there's, there's a give and take and a weird balance to all of this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. You know, and, and the other thing is because America is what it is, why do people believe it's a flat earth? Because they're allowed to believe it's a flat earth because they can believe it's a flat earth. Mm-hmm. Some of that stuff, I tend to wonder how many of those people are just trolls that are kind of pushing it along, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I know the earth yeah. really isn't flat, but I know it pisses people off for me to say it. Cause I had a guy that listened to my show that I actually was like, dude, we can't deal with you anymore. But, uh, he was like, I'm not into this stuff, but I'm just going to keep saying it out there cause it irritates people and blah, 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 blah. Well, eventually people start to, you know what? You're right. I believe in what you say. And then it's like, well, this isn't a joke anymore. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how religions get started. <laughs> I, I, I have always said, so, I felt, felt that the, the flat earth thing was a good thought experiment, you know, dealing with the way that we have to accept data through certain channels. Uh, however, I have never, you know, like when I, it's, it's as a thought experiment, it works fine. Because what do we ourselves know? What do we ourselves? What can we ourselves prove versus what is given to us by the powers that be? Correct. Sure. But there's there, there also has to be logic and reason mixed in there. You know, I mean, it it doesn't take a whole lot to to prove the Earth is not flat. Um, <laughs> and when it comes down to analytical thinking, if kids were taught in school how to take these things apart. Well, they could take this economist article apart and realize that they're also trying to, you know, sideline other stuff that has nothing to do with the flat earth, you know? And so that, that's, I think one of the reasons you won't get that. I mean, these, these companies are, you know, like, like this article is written very carefully. It is, it it has an agenda behind it. It's not just an article about, uh, flat earth, about the flat earth. Yeah. Yeah. It's also pushing a very liberal agenda here, uh, and that's yeah. not to take a shot at anyone who's liberal. It's just that it's it's to to go with the the, the statement there that uh, American teachers tell their students climate change is driven in part by natural causes, or a third of them uh, by natural causes, 
Yeah, well, it is in part. It, how much of that part is not exactly known, but we know the Earth goes through cycles, and that climate change is affected by that. Mm-hmm. So to say that it's not is intellectually dishonest and reeks of agenda. That's right. So, it kind of goes back to, like, the big trend now is everything is the millennials' fault. Millennials, yeah. this, and, and a lot of these articles directly contradict one another too, which is funny when you really start digging into them. Uh huh. And I feel, I actually feel really bad for the kids nowadays because what they're being told is, you know, become part of the system. Don't, don't be unique. Don't be, don't go out and fight stuff. Conform, conform. It's all becoming conform, conform, conform. Mm hmm. You know, and it's it's really strange where we look at like the situation. Well, again, I, I got to be careful what I say because I don't want to go down rabbit holes. But kids nowadays are they're much more educated because they have the internet. They can get whatever they want. They're much more computer savvy. Technology is changing really, really fast. Kids nowadays are different. Millennials do things different. They're more apt to look at say, you know what, you did this wrong, and I'm not going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And the response is, which every generation does to the previous generation. You know, hippies were treated the same way, you know, uh -huh. back in the sixties. But now it's different where when kids come out and say, well, we want to do this, we're going to do things this way. Well, why are you doing that? How come you don't want to have cable? How come you don't watch television? How come you guys don't go out to eat? How much you're ruining everything. You're ruining everything. It's like, mm -hmm. no, they're creating a new way to do things that we can't deal with. And they're but also responding to the environment they live in. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Like Exactly. And it's like, well, millennials, this millennials at, it's just like, you know, let them go. Shut up. You know, our, our, we've had our time. It's, it's now theirs, uh, but, but, it, <laughs> yeah. but it is something that every generation does to every other generation. It's not yes, exactly. Yeah. It is definitely not something that's unique to this scenario. But I feel in this generation, because of us being all interconnected and news being out there and everything can just be thrown out there and made available that it seems like the millennials are being picked on so much harder. They're actually the next generation, there's a generation after the millennials and there's one in between that they're even being broken down even more. And what I'm seeing more and more is, you know, conform, 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 That's conform. Smart. Yeah. You know, and I remember when I was young, I'm from generation X. We didn't respond to any kind of ads. We were a different generation and people said the same thing to us. You guys are going to be running the country soon and you're going to screw it up. Blah, blah, blah. We're nihilistic, crazy Gen Xers, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, we've kind of we've we've fallen into the mold nicely in our own little way, but we've still fallen into it. And now we look at the millennials and we're like, "You guys are idiots!" and blah blah blah. God bless them. Tear us down. Start yeah. over. Do something different. Because exactly. you know your kids, you're going to do it to your kids. But hey, we've we've tried it and look what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> We believe the earth is flat and vaccines will harm us and, you know, any else, anything else you want to throw into that, you know? <laughs> you know what's the, what's the new fad among millennials? What's that? Astrology. Really? Oh, yeah. There are whole sorts of uh, articles saying how there are all these groups in which, you know, 20-somethings, 30-somethings discuss all about their, you know, their birth chart. They know all about how Mercury is in retrograde, and I don't even know what the hell that means. But uh, <laughs> yeah, astrology <laughs> is one of the things that uh, it's interesting to millennials. Another thing is witchcraft. Yeah. You know, to them, the idea that they can hack reality the same way they can hack a computer is mm -hmm. uh, very appealing. So. Uh, yeah, the well. things are going to be interesting to them because they're living through times of uh, such great uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, they don't even have the certainty that they will get a job after they they uh, get out of college. Yeah. yeah, they they don't even have the certainty that they will have. You know, they will be able to retire. Well yeah, tribalism in, in general is on the rise. And I mean, the, the same thing happened pre World War II. You know, tri uh, tribalism identity, you know, they were, oh, yeah, it was on the rise sense, as well. Yeah. And um, that generally happens when you've got this sense of political unrest and like uh, politics going polar, you know, two opposites, like extreme left, extreme right. So yeah. it's almost it's almost repeating itself, honestly. I don't, I don't even know if it's that much different. Well, the internet's different, but we tend to go tribal like that when when things get more chaotic and, yep. and they're creating bleak. their own tribe right now. 
Yes, and there's lots. There's like there's um you know um heathen tribes, witchcraft. Like it's going into small. Yeah, areas. millennials are really embracing yeah. magic. I was reading that somewhere too. That there's a whole new generation of of millennials that are out there like gravitating towards the practice of magic and witchcraft and be it whatever form that you want to call it. And a lot of the old school magician people are getting pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that's their thing. Come on. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. I mean, think I think that all magicians uh, are all too happy that people are paying attention to this stuff. Depends they on their doing. motives in it. Uh, the, yeah, sure. Well, how did we get here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this kind of down, a, get down a wormhole. Because of you. That's what that's what happens when the Earth goes flat. Oh, well, come on. Where, where 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 did the road go, Rojin? What did you do with it? I do that when I come on here. <laughs> well, that makes it a earlier, good show. I'm, I'm talking too much. <laughs> nah. I'm the I'm always the one that throws a spanner into your works when I come yeah, on here. Yeah, but that's what I want. So. <laughs> the conversation should go in interesting directions. I'm really curious what's going to happen to the kids of the of the of the millennials though. What's going to happen with them? You know, it's like it's it's weird because like I'm 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 getting to the age now where I'm just beginning to be that old man who's having a hard time dealing with technology. Where I look <laughs> at my daughter and sometimes I'll walk up and be like, "Hey, help me out with this." You're assuming that they're going to have kids. Yeah, well, that's another <laughs> that's thing true. that's changing. That's they yeah, they're have, not they having don't even kids. Want to have sex anymore. No, I don't know about that. I think they just. Oh, that's no, one of the things I was talking check, about. Check check the statistics. Uh, I know, uh, but. As I was saying earlier, of, of 20 years, don't think that, you know, that having, you know, s sexual re relationships, it's worth it. You know, they prefer. To but there's other other girls out there that say that all they want to do is meet up and have sex. And that's it. They don't want to yeah. have relationships. This th sure. the whole millennial thing is completely contradictory. One person will write an article saying this and somebody also write an article is saying the exact opposite. And I think that's. Part, this is a side effect of everything being tracked, all of the metrics being tracked. Everybody's trying to make sense of all of the data that's out there, that they're grasping at whatever they can. Like th the millennials, in my opinion, are the most watched and analyzed generation that we've ever had up until this point. Oh, easily. Because sure. the technology is now there to do that. So everybody's just grabbing all this data and trying to make the best they can out of it. Um, I heard a great comparison on a podcast earlier. It's like we're at a stage right now where – we're kind of like a young child and the synapses is in the brain. We're all a synapses in the brain or something and everything is firing at once and the brain's just trying to make sense of it. <laughs> so maybe in 20 years when the brain at the collective conscious brain is older, the chatter will slow down and things will be able to start to make sense. But this generation, everything is analyzed. The cars that they buy, the food that they buy, where they mm -hmm. shop, how they shop, what are they shopping with? Are they taking out loans? Are they not taking out loans? Are they getting credit cards? What kind of credit cards are they getting? What kind of movies are they going and seeing? Every single thing They're is monitored. paranoid. <laughs> I don't really think they care. I think the, the millennials themselves, because they live in the environment, they were born and raised in the environment. To them, it's just another form of white noise. But for us, the uh, the other generation that's watching it, we're the ones that are obsessing over it. You know, this is we're the ones that are doing whatever. Because my daughter, you know, I have talks with her all the time about politics and stuff like that. A lot, so much of this stuff is just like, yeah, whatever. This is you know, this is this is this is their world. So yeah. it's How nothing strange she? for them. She's tw almost twenty three. You know, and has, for the, has she ever voted? Yes. Yeah, she has. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, so she she pays she she's paying know. really a lot of paying attention to a lot of politics and stuff. And she's she's you know, I I've told both of my kids, you be whatever you want to be. You can be a Republican, you can be a Democrat, you can be whatever. Just be aware of the consequences of your actions when you make the vote and be, you know, go out and get as much information you can from as many sources and make your decision that way. Don't just watch one news network. Yeah. And as a result, they've kind of, I got one daughter who's fairly liberal and I understand the reasons why she is. And the other daughter is fairly, she's a lot like me. She's more right down the middle. And, you know, I was like, well, if you do that, you're going to piss everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I, I think the problem is we don't, we don't have conversations about this stuff. We have arguments about this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And if people just learn to, to communicate with one another, they'd find out they have a lot more in common than they realize, even if they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Because I most find that we're becoming tribes. Yeah. I find the, that interesting about you guys in, in the American culture. 
I've heard so many times the idea that, you know, during a, a social uh, gathering, there are two topics that you don't bring out to the table. One is Religious politics and, and the other one is religion. Correct. I don't get that, you know. So what are you supposed to talk about if you're not supposed to talk about important stuff that affects you directly? You know, I mean, what's on TV? You know, yeah, why is it that you guys have lost the ability to engage in important discussions that I don't get carried away or don't get hit it to the point that, you know, go into blows with someone that disagrees with you. you know, and, we and are that, a society that's very much given away. We're very content to give away our ability of free thinking. In my opinion, I really believe that a lot of people just don't have the time to want to put thought into this stuff. And it's easier to turn on whatever political party and news you subscribe to and get your opinions, thoughts, and ideas that way and say, oh, you know what, I, I I identify with this. That's the direction that I'm going to go in. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Well, let me look it up. Okay, well, I, I'm part of this party or this group or this or whatever. I get my news from here. This is what I should believe. And talking points are just hammered over and over again in people's heads in the 24 hours news cycle. Yeah. It's much yeah. easier than doing that than, as Soraya said, to have to apply critical thinking. It takes too much work to do that. You know, it yeah. takes too much. You got, you got to unbury. We we got our faces buried in our phones and everything. Like my Facebook page for our show is the only rules we have are no drama and no no politics. We do discuss religion on there, but fortunately, we have people from all religions on our page, and people are fairly open about it. We haven't had very many problems, but politics, you just can't discuss any kind of politics whatsoever. Because it turns well, Hillary would have been worse. That's I'm not talking about Hillary right now. You know, <laughs> that's what it always degrades into. You know, or, yeah. or whatever, whatever your whatever you abscond with. Whereas other countries like Canada, other countries, it it's, works differently there. Like in other, like Canada, you don't really have a president. You have a prime minister, the same as yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, the speaker a of a party. We have a prime minister. That's right, and he's not. And a he's queen. Becoming, he's <laughs> becoming less and less popular. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's not the prime minister is more or less the figurehead for the party. Where in America, even though you may have a Republican president or a Democratic president in there, he is still the president is a branch of of the government. Whereas in Canada, or in other countries that work off of that system, he is the speaker for that party. Whereas in America, it's like, all right, you've got we've got Trump, you've got the Republican Party, which is now shattering into other Republican yeah. parties. You know, yeah. it's it splinters off from itself. Whereas in Canada, you guys have got a gazillion different parties, but when whatever party is in charge, that is the party that's running the country, and you have a speaker for that party. Mm -hmm. If that makes you know sense to people who are listening. <clears throat> But in America, it's like, yeah, what do I want to believe in? Okay, I'll believe in that. You know, I, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now. I don't have time to put thought into this. I'll fight you on it. I'll argue with you on it because that's what I believe. But it's just so much easier to do things that way and, and go to your corner and come out fighting. <laughs> my, 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 my approach with most people is I'm actually very interested in why people believe the things they do. And so I, I, I never try to force my views on anyone. Like. Exactly. I, I, I will talk to someone and I could talk to people about politics and religion and I'm perfectly fine with it because at no point am I telling them they're wrong because I, I don't, I don't need to do that. I, I want to understand. I want to, I want to find places where we agree. I'm not looking to argue. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to agree with people. It's like, okay, so do you think this, do you think that, why do you think this? And, and it gives me some insight too on why people view the things the way they do. And so much of it, of course, I mean, we all view things differently. You know, none of us have had the same experiences in life. We're not, you know, our brains are all a little bit different. Um, the way we've been raised has all been a little bit different. So no one's going to see things exactly the way anyone else does. And, and I think that's part of the thing we need to understand that no, it's not always a matter of right and wrong. I mean, sometimes it is because sometimes people have bad information, but sometimes it's a matter of experience. Exactly. But people don't want to see it that way. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I have a friend who does uh, work uh, looking for people, uh, hoax, basically hoaxing the system, you know, using the system. And he's one of the, the people they send out to check and see if this is legit or not. And mm. so he encounters a lot of people abusing the system. And so his, his viewpoint on that is very... You know, like he's not so much for the public, you know, helping out the poor people and so on and so forth because he sees the excessive amount of people who are abusing it. 
So from from his viewpoint, mm-hmm. you go, all right. Well, I understand why you, you're not. You know, it's not not that I'm saying he's like anti all programs, but he's just very skeptical because mm-hmm. he sees so much of this compared to somebody else who doesn't see it and sees it actually helping the people who actually need it. It's not that those two people are necessarily disagreeing so much as they have different views in their life of how this stuff works. One seeing right. it work and one seeing it not work. Neither one is necessarily wrong. Correct. But as it is the way with most things. Yeah. All right. Before we get way too into politics, let's bring this to a close. So I thank all three of you. Uh, Red Pill, where can people find you? Uh, mainly at uh, the Daily Grail, where I contribute with the, the news briefs, or also I also write the occasional article. I also write for uh, Mysterious Universe. There are actually two articles by me this month. Hopefully, I'll, I'll manage to write another one before the end of the month. And please visit my personal website, absurdbydesign.com where there are links to a, a Zazzle store where I, I, I'm, I'm selling uh, T-shirts uh, with my own design. I'm trying to make, uh, uh, I'm speaking about trying to make, uh, uh, you know, these topics uh, less shameful, you know, and then trying to, to, to make people wear, you know, uh, apparel with 14 themes, you know. So, you know, be part of the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ro. Uh, you can find me on my podcast at www.projectarchivist.com. Our show, any place you can get podcasts, you can get our show. And you can also find uh, the Project Ar- Archivist Facebook page on Facebook as well. And uh, you were talking about that UFO convention earlier. By the time this airs, you will have an episode of Project Archivist up with your experiences there. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Either that, or you were tarred and feathered and at the church. No, I just, or, or converted. <laughs> or like converted. I said, I, I, I'm gonna do it. I, I kind of don't want to though, because I'm gonna. I have a feeling that I'm gonna become one of the people that I really don't like. I will become what I don't like by being all smarmy and all full of myself. But I just got a feeling about this that's going to be like, okay, wait a minute. You, you, whoa, hold on. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, that, that should be up fairly soon. We're going to record it tomorrow night as soon as we get done with the, the show as, as fast as possible Why it's all still fresh in our heads so we can kind of laugh about something that maybe we shouldn't be laughing about. But I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> all right. And Melissa? Oh, well, you can find me at um, our website, www.espirit.tv. We're doing a lot of interviews and artwork and drawings. We have some pretty cool guests that we have coming out soon. We just interviewed a lady, and she gave us a tour of her Victorian mansion in Whitby and and all about Krampus stuff. So we're going to have some cool interviews. Uh, a lot of people from the UK, so you can find us there or on Facebook, um, Extra Sense productions or we have a group ESP group so you can come and join there and yeah we're it's in development we're hopefully getting it on as a podcast because right now it's visual on on YouTube because we do a lot of art drawings and sketching and whatnot of whatever our guests are talking about but we're going to put the audio on um, in iTunes and Stitcher because we know a lot of people like to listen things but yeah that's where you can find us all right I thank all of you. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Soraya. We'll see you next time. And a special thanks to our Patreons who are donating at the $10 or above level. Christopher Sheehan, Mark Brady, Allison Cook, Christopher Vaughn, Robert Groom, Chris Elmquist, Scott Morris Everett, Super Inframan, Patricia Gaiaquinta, Lauren Melton, John Eddy, Alfred Tuttle, Kevin Shrek, and Carla Mahoney. Thank you all so very much. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support.